What's going on everybody? Brandon Schaefer here. So it looks like I got about 20 people watching on a Friday night, not too bad. I'm more concerned about quality, not quantity, you know what I mean? So it's just been a while since I uh, jumped on a live stream and kind of just connected with everyone and since I've done a video. So I just want to jump on here. I had some free time to myself have the apartment to myself. I just did some painting for a few hours right there, 12 by 24 inch painting. So that's cool. But um, yeah, other than that, uh, just been doing paintings, man. I, I've just been, just been putting the work in, posting on the internet, social media, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff and just been painting every day. Uh, I just started last week. I went out with a plein air group. Um, we go out, we're gonna go every Sunday starting now. But, uh, but the group, they've been doing it for a while every Sunday. I just recently found them and they're in Sacramento, right near me, so uh, pretty cool. So I went out with them last Sunday and I'm plan on going this Sunday and any Sunday I can from now on and it's actually a group of folks that are around my age and a little little bit older so it was kind of um, different from other groups that I've been in a lot of other groups that I've been in in the past are kind of people that are retired you know in their 50s 60s 40s maybe and nothing wrong with that you know it's just a different it's kind of a different vibe you get a different you know I've been trying to find artists that are in my area around my age that are trying to do it from a living and um, just finally found some so it's it's pretty cool to kind of connect that way finally so what's going on everybody what's everybody up to Like I said, I mean, I just jumped on here. I, I, I didn't really have anything in mind. Um, I can show you guys some of my recent paintings. I just did uh, 12 by 24 right there. I'm still, you know, it's not finished. You know, I'm kind of, um, I've been thinking a lot lately about, you know, just, I'm always trying to push the quality of my work to be better and better. So like, you know, at this stage, in my painting career, if you want to call it that, you know, it's it's kind of hard to get a really good one in one session, like in one go. And surprisingly, this one, I, I banged it out really quickly. Um, you know, I was doing more of a, just a very loose kind of sketchy feel to it. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's completely done. It's, it's good right now. I like where it's at. But tomorrow may be a different story. I may find just a few things here and there and just keep tweaking it. And uh, maybe in a week, I'll want to tweak it more. So I'm kind of just uh, going with the flow of, my, of how I feel about my work now rather than trying to just finish it in one session, like Alla Prima, Alla Prima trying to finish it in one go. Um, you know, sometimes it happens, sometimes you get a good one and, and it's just perfect, you know, the first time, but it's, it's pretty rare, especially f for, for me and for like when you're doing like, when I do like a larger size, you know, sometimes I can do a small one and boom, I, I kind of know when it, it looks good. And sometimes I definitely know when I'm struggling. So I'm trying to get, I've been getting less, um, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to get a point in my work to where there's less struggle, and that's that's a struggle, ironically. But um, you know, there's a lot of paintings on the wall that I have up and stuff, and I look at them all the time. You know, I'm always sit. This is my kind of desk here. It's actually a a dining room table, but uh, there's no room to sit at it, so I use it as my desk. And I'm um, always looking at the paintings that I did like a year ago a few you know a month or two ago and surprisingly there's nothing I really want to tweak with these so like for me like when I can look at it over and over every day and and really analyze it and be okay with it then I know 
okay, I can just let that go. It's not a big deal for me to want to fix it. Just something interesting. I, I don't know. It was just kind of a weird rant. So uh, anyway, wow, nobody's really chatting. So what's what's going on? What's going on, everybody? So you guys, you guys want to see one of my latest paintings? I just finished. I started. I did a nine by twelve yesterday, and then I finished it this morning. And I was kind of. Uh, it's not as loose as my other work, really. You know, I was really. I was going. Uh, I don't know, I was just experimenting, like seeing how, not like detailed, but let me, let me just show you, because you'll get the idea. So this one is still wet, so I'm gonna try not to drop it. I, I say that every time on these live streams, and I always end up like dropping one of them, or like, you know, catching it. So this one, okay, it is a little bit loose, but I, I don't know. There's a different feel to it than, than kind of my normal work. Of course, this camera is just so crappy, this webcam. But, you know, the tree is like there's just, there's, there's kind of like less texture on the tree bark and stuff and very soft, you know, it's kind of a soft feel to it and stuff. Um, But yeah, that's that's kind of one I recently did. I'm I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, I think. Um, it's just a little different. Like if you check out my Instagram right now, like one I just posted uh, two days ago or something, you know, it's a lot more like abstract shapes and stuff. Like I let the paint kind of speak for itself rather than trying to make the paint into something, you know, it's, it's just, it's interesting. Um, I've really just been uh, kind of, sometimes I'm just scrolling through Instagram or s some random thing online and I see someone's work that I really like. And then I, I ask myself, like, what do I like about it? Like, why did you know, I, I saw so many other people's work and I was just scrolling through it, but then this one artist, I stopped at it and I was like blown away by it. And I try to like figure out what it is about their art that I like. Is it the softness of some of the edges? Is it the contrast? Is it the subject? Like what is it that, that kind of captivated me, if you want to call it that? So that's something I kind of been thinking about. Um, it, the the funny thing is, I, 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 it always happens to me when I'm looking at like portraits or figures, and uh, it's kind of this internal battle with me because I, because you kind of handle, you know, the way to handle figures and portraits is different than a landscape. And a lot of these artists that do mainly just portraits and figures and stuff don't really do landscapes. So it's hard for me to really take a lot from their work. Um, you know, it, it's it, like like an artist that I, I just recently, um, you know, I, I've been following his work for a while, but I just kind of rediscovered it, it is uh, Nick Alm, N-I-C-K-A-L-M. I mean, really great artists, and I think he's a Sweden, Swedish artist, but he does figures and portraits and things like that, very, very little landscapes. And the landscapes he has done, like on his website, are, are in watercolor, and they're plain air, and they're from a few years ago, totally different style than his portraits and figures. So, But I really love the way he kind of handles his portraits and figures, very sergeant-esque, sergeant-like, and... It's like, man, how can I, you know, what is it, what is it really about his work? I've been trying to like figure it out for the last day or two. And I'm just like, what is it about his work that I like so much? And I, th I'm, I think it's like the softness of everything. And then maybe the contrast, like the simplicity. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of been bugging me. And I, I've just been trying to figure out how to kind of uh, 
take some of that and apply it to my own work. And that's kind of what I was experimenting with those trees that I just showed you guys. It's kind of like, you know, getting a higher quality rendering, using, you know, softening things, um, you know, just experimenting, just playing around, having fun. I mean, at the end of the day, that's kind of how I, I like to approach things is like experimenting and just doing it, you know, as much as I can. And because that's the only way you're going to get better is just keep keep practicing and doing it. So. Did I get up to Hope Valley this year? Um, I kind of, I, I'm not sure if I actually went to that specific area, unfortunately. I know I've been saying like the last two years, but I, I did get up to... Um, I did go up to Lake Tahoe, and I went to um, I went to Spooner Lake, uh, which is on in Nevada. I wanted to go to like Emerald Bay and go. Um, I'm trying to think of the the road, 88 or 80, 80. I think it's 88, and go on the other side of the of Lake Tahoe, and go up to Truckee. Um, or, or just go go near like Fallen Leaf Lake, Emerald Bay, kind of that area. I wanted to go, and when I got up there, it, it was a bad weekend. I ended up I left the house late, um, and by the time I got up there, and I was heading that way, I was heading west. Um, you know where it forks in South Lake Tahoe, and there was so much traffic going to Emerald Bay that. I didn't have the patience. I was like, it was like two in the afternoon already. And it was just like, there was road work and traffic. And I was like, you know, screw it. So I just went the other way. So I went to Spooner Lake, walked around there. I got um, some cool photos of like aspen trees and stuff. You know, not as epic as I had hoped for, but it was still pretty epic. And I got uh, one painting out of it. Um, I'll show that one right now real quick. It's hanging on the wall over here. Yeah, so this one's hanging on the wall. Um, so this is like the edge of Spooner Lake. So there's the edge of the lake, and then there's like, a, this is like the marsh, kind of wetlands, and then this is uh, the aspen trees. So that one was pretty cool, and you know, it's just, it's so beautiful to get up to that area. But, um, yeah, I didn't really get up uh, get up to where I wanted or whatever, but uh, it is what it is. I, I got out a lot. Um, so, but I got out a lot, and I took, um, you know, I've been taking photos all the time. You, you know, I, I got a lot of autumn photos and stuff around uh, Davis here, my town and stuff. So for me, really, it's just the experience, you know, getting out taking photos, having fun, getting out, doing plain air, and, and just, you know, doing whatever I can. Do you have any advice for a beginner in art who is 28? Well, I'm 27. I'm going to be 28 in less than a month. So, yeah, basically, I mean, just start doing. You know, if you're a beginner now, you need to start working hard if you want to get good at it. If you're really passionate about it, then you probably already want to do it every day. You know, the thing is... A lot of people that like follow my channel, you know, I just recently got over 200,000 subscribers and a lot of those find me like on my how to draw videos or how to sketch video. It's like my most viewed video, how to, how to draw episode one. And it was just a little crappy video I made years ago that I never thought was going to have 2.5 million views right now, but it just took off on YouTube and, um, you know, it's kind of weird because I'm more of a painting channel, but you know, my point was, I think a lot of those people get into art for like a week or two or a month and then they just quit, you know, something fun to get into. They're not really passionate about it because if you're really passionate about something, like if you really want to do art and you, you want to make a living from it, or it's something you really want to get good at, you're already going to want to do it. You're already going to be doing it all the time. And if you're not doing it all the time, then you're either procrastinating or you're just, 
wasting time buying materials you're not doing and usually like the answer to like 90 percent of the questions i get is to just do it more whatever you want to do you want to get good at drawing do it more do it all the time do as much as you can you know learn as much as you can and then apply all that knowledge because if you have all that knowledge but you don't apply it then it's useless so start applying everything that you learn and just start doing it start making mistakes the more mistakes you make the more you're going to learn the more you'll get better that's how everybody gets better you know that's how i've gotten better over the years you know and, and it's funny because now i've I'm, I'm been posting a lot of my paintings on instagram and facebook and all this stuff you know every week and there's people that have been following me for a few years and they're like wow you're getting really good now you know it's it's been fun to watch you over the years progress as an artist and for me, I feel like I'm not even, am I even getting better? I don't know that I feel like I am, but other people see it. So I, you know, I'm just going to keep doing it. I don't really care. Um, you know, I, I know I'm going to get better. And uh, 10 years from now, I'm going to be doing the same thing and I'll probably be doing it more. So it's just whatever you want to do, just do more of it. You've mentioned you no longer use a limited palette, but instead use 10 colors. How many colors do you feel constitute limited? Um, you know, usually like a limited palette is like three to four colors plus white. Um, so, I mean, usually like a red, yellow, and blue, white, that's a limited palette. Red, yellow, blue with a brown or a green is a limited palette. Um, usually like an extended palette or like an expanded one usually involves having convenience colors um, that's what i find with the palette that i'm using like i've started using yellow ochre i mean i can mix you can mix yellow ochre if you have a very strong yellow a strong red and a strong blue you can gray those down um, with mo having a mixture of mostly yellow and a little bit of red and uh, you know some blue to neutralize that orange, you're gonna get yellow ochre. So it's mostly just having a few convenience colors. You know, my palette is right here. This is my palette. It's 10 colors, ultramarine blue, viridian, transparent red oxide. Um, so those three colors, I feel none of those are really convenience colors. The transparent red oxide is, it's a very, lovely brown you can mix a lot of those browns but the great thing about it is the transparent quality of it that's what i really like about it and uh, you, you're able to get you know you can mix really deep dark colors with that color uh, mixing it with alizarin crimson or ultramarine blue or viridian you can get some really nice transparent darks um, then i have a alizarin crimson a really strong red i have one called mars red it's very similar to like terra rosa like, like a brownish red, that one's convenience. Um, I can mix that color, but um, what I found is that's the strongest color on my palette for tinting, tinting strength. When I try to mix any color with that color, I have to use very little of that color. It's stronger than cadmium red. It like just devours any color that I mix with it. So if I'm mixing like this Mars red with Viridian, I have to be very careful because the Mars red is my strongest color. The Viridian I use is my weakest color. So if I'm, you know, depending on the mixture I'm making by just mixing those two, I have to use a lot of Viridian and a little tiny bit of that Mars red. And I learned that by mixing these charts. I learned after playing with the color so much, because you have to mix, each one of these squares is a mixture I mixed up and it takes forever. It took me like two weeks to do all those charts. And that was me doing like one or two a day. You know, it just it takes a long, long time, a lot of brain power. It, you know, you get exhausted. Um, so, sorry about that, my phone. Um, where was I going with that? So that's, a you know, the, it, it's having convenience colors. You know, I have two... Um, I have lemon, cadmium lemon, and then I have cadmium yellow medium, and then I have yellow ochre, which convenience color, and this one is Indian yellow, but
but really it's it's kind of like cadmium yellow deep and other brands but the brand that i use it's called indian yellow very awesome transparent orange yellow love it it's it's a really great color to have but it's a convenience color it's just like an orange i can mix it with i can get that color with cadmium red and cadmium yellow you know i can i can mix that color if i wanted but um you know so i have a few convenience colors and some that aren't really necessary but uh the reason i use that i'm just giving you a long winded answer i might as well just you know give all i can here while i'm on here the reason i started using this uh these kind of 10 colors is because when I'm outside, when you do plein air, when I do plein air, I don't want to have to sit there and mix up a ton of mixtures. Using a limited palette, you have to mix up, you know, red, yellow, and blue with every mixture, and it takes a long time. With this method, I can mix up, I can use just two colors plus white, you know, maybe add just a slightly a third color to, to shift it a little bit, and I can get the exact color I want, and... I can easily replicate that color. So let's say I mix up a little pile of it and then I, I, I paint a tree and then like 10 minutes later, crap, I need that color again. Well, I know how to mix it. It's just, okay, it's cadmium, lemon, and viridian. Boom. Easy, easy, easy. But if I only have three colors, red, yellow, and blue, it's a pain to get just that right amount of blue and yellow and then a little touch of red. You know, it's just more of a pain. So this is like a quick way to get that color you really need that I really need. Um, that's how I see it anyway. Anyway, uh, 89, yes. Road 89, that's what it was. Yeah, I still haven't explored up there as much as I'd like, but, uh, you know, I've been to Big Tree State Park up near Arnold, up, up four. I've been up there a lot, and I went, I went there when it was, um, in autumn, and it's just really beautiful. Unbelievable. Here's a painting from it right there. I don't know if you've been there. It's like a... Big Trees State Park, unbelievable little sequoia park, and especially in the fall, I mean, it's unreal, the colors. And it's it's best if you go on a cloudy day. And man, the colors are just, it's it's probably the most beautiful place I've ever been to in the in autumn. Um, what varnish do you use or recommend? Um, I use Gamvar, Gamvar varnish by Gamblin. There's also another one that I want to use, but I can't recommend it because I haven't used it yet, so I'm not going to recommend it. But it's some kind of conservator's varnish. Um, but Gamvar, I think, is just easier to use, probably. You know, easier to remove and stuff. I can tell you're getting better, lol. Thanks, I appreciate it, Rebecca. It's good to hear, you know, like, because I don't really, you know, I can, there's some paintings I can, I can, see like okay i'm getting better i i i can tell i'm getting better but then there's some paintings in the past that i've done that i'm like man that painting was really good so like some of the paintings i did like two or three years ago are better than a lot of the paintings i do now so it's like am i really getting better i don't you know i don't know maybe i'm getting better overall you know i'm finding like the process easier I'm, you know i'm figuring out things but still have a long way to go Do you make art as a living? Um, I'm a graphic designer, so I, you can kind of say that. I can technically say that, but no, I don't. Not yet. Um, I have a lot of paintings to sell, that's for sure. So, you know, I'm, I've, been look, I've been really thinking lately in this last month about the business side of art, and I've been really trying to wrap my head around it. I think I said this in the last podcast. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But I've been going even deeper into it. I've been trying to really wrap my head around how to approach the business side of art. And, you know, it's getting to the point where I have to really, like, start becoming more of a salesman and start getting into, you know, into the selling aspect because it's not something I do that much. I'm, I'm more of, you know, just the painting aspect. But, um, you know, I think this next year is going to be pretty interesting for me to kind of explore a lot of different areas, you know, 
whether it's, um, you know, selling or, um, what am I trying to say? You know, finding, you know, maybe finding a business partner that, that is a salesman that can sell my art and, you know, find, you know, find some kind of split 60, 40 or whatever it, you know, whatever percentage, um, you know, that way I can just paint all the time and then he can just sell all the time or she can just sell my paintings. So it's something I've been thinking about, but yeah, right now it's, it's not something I'm making a living from, you know, my YouTube videos, I make a little bit of money, um, from my YouTube videos, which is great because you guys don't have to pay for them. You watch them. I make money. It allows me to invest in things like this microphone, um, you know, supplies for my paintings. And I give back to you guys in terms of value, you know, trying to give you guys as much value as I can, you know, sharing new things that I've learned and, you know, just telling you how to approach things. Like how have I got to the point where I am today? You know, it's just by doing more. It's just by painting more. You know, one of the reasons I stopped making YouTube videos as much is because I've been spending more time painting. And somebody left an interesting comment a few months ago. They said, they said, yeah, the interesting thing, when you stopped making videos, I actually started painting more because I wasn't watching you anymore. You know, so I think that's a very important aspect. Whoa, a lot of uh, chatting going on here. Glad you finally caught the live stream. Thanks for joining in. I use 10 colors and find that is more than enough. It is more than enough. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 10 colors is definitely more than enough. Um, you know, yeah, there's some paintings where, you know, you don't use all 10 colors. You know, it just so sometimes, it, it, but it's good to have that selection. You can always go to the limited palette. That's the cool thing about having these 10 colors is I can use just a limited palette if I wanted. But... You know, say I needed a really strong green. Okay, now I have Iridian. I have a little bit more to work with. I have a little bit more room to, you know, play around with things. Um, and, you know, you can, these charts make it to where you can figure out, you can look at a scene and figure out the overall harmony. Like, you know, looking at this scene I just painted, uh, right here, you can see that it's mostly like e greens, yellow greens. It's all just yellow greens. So then when you look at these charts, you say, okay, you know, it's mostly, you know, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, medium, and the viridian. So th that's like the main harmony of this whole painting. Yeah, there's other little colors, but the overall dominant harmony are colors in that chart. So it just, it breaks it down really easily. Are you still using oils? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, still using oils. Um, I, I doubt I'm ever going to go back to acrylics or anything like that, but um, I am going to probably experiment with, like, gouache or watercolor in the future, but uh, I'm disabled and can't paint anymore, LOL. Wow, sorry to hear that. That's, that's a bummer. <sighs> that's, that's heavy, man. Well, I hope you can still enjoy art, you know, and uh, more than just knowledge, your drawing lessons gave me confidence enough to try. Thank you. I want to paint, but it seems to me that before painting, I need to learn drawing. Sorry about my English. Your English seemed perfect, bro. No, don't apologize. Um, your English is probably better than mine. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, drawing, having, drawing is the foundation of art. I mean, definitely if you're better at drawing, your paintings are going to be better. But, well, not necessarily, but generally, that's usually the case. You know, I, I've only been painting for like five or six years, and I'm, I'm kind of getting to a level that I'm, you know, it's almost like a professional level. I'm getting there, I feel. And, um, you know, I think for others if they just started painting like five years ago, I think it could be, it's a lot more challenging, but I started drawing when I was like four or five. So like art has been like my whole life, mostly like drawing. So I have this strong foundation of 
being able to look at something and, you know, having good hand-eye coordination, you know, having that foundation of values, being able to render values very strongly really helps me see values in painting. Um, it was definitely difficult at first, and sometimes it is still difficult now. Excuse me, but um, I think it's it definitely helps. But, you know, you can dabble in painting a little bit. You don't have to just stick to drawing if, you know. How do you stay motivated when your painting is not going the way you want? That's, that's you know. If the painting isn't going the way you want, you have to, and you know that. You, the first thing, the, the huge part of this is having awareness. And sometimes that can be hard for people. Excuse me. You know, having that awareness when when you're painting and you know the painting is not going the way you want. So the first step is is you are aware of that. You realize it while you're in that moment. So you you stop. You step back. Maybe take like two to five minute break. Go into the kitchen, go outside, go for a walk, clear your head, do something. Don't look at the painting. Go back after that. Go back to the painting and think in terms of these five things. Um, you know, maybe there's other aspects to, to think about as well, but these are the main five. So when you're looking at your painting now with fresh eyes, drawing values, color, edges, composition. Those are the five main things that just, you can break it down. Those are the five main things that, that are usually wrong with the painting um, or that can go wrong. And most of the time, it can be, you know, it can be a lot of, it can be all of them. It can be a mixture of all of them. And that's why it can be difficult. Um, a lot of the times I find for myself, especially a painting I was doing yesterday, that the tree one that I showed you guys at the beginning over here, this tree one, that tree, uh, it was values. So I added in darks at the very beginning of the painting and um, I kept having to scrape off the painting. Um, you know, I just, I couldn't figure out the way I wanted to do the background and the foliage. So I just kept trying it. I just would put it down, put a lot of thick paint. I would try thin paint. I'd, I'd just be playing with it for 20 minutes, half an hour, and then I'd say, it's not working. Scrape it off with a palette knife, start over. I did that a few times. And um, and then I, I just brought the rest of it to finish. You know, I did the, the tree trunks as best as I, I could and, and really finalized them and then tried to just keep building the background around them. You know, what background is going to fit with that? You know, trying to get a balance of simplified, but still being able to tell what it is. You know, I don't want it too blurry, too soft, but I don't want it too detailed to detract from the tree trunks and the branches. You know, it's it's a pain. But okay, let me get back. <laughs> I'm off track here. But so by the by the end of all that scraping and stuff, the darks, the really dark darks that I had at the beginning, were out of the painting. So I needed to get that contrast back. So I had to add the dark values back in. Um, so sometimes it's value, sometimes it's color, sometimes it's all your edges are too hard. You have to just soften mostly all the edges and, and then keep, you know, just one key sharp or two, two to three semi-sharp edges um, in the focal area. You know, maybe your colors need more variety. Maybe you need just slight uh, temperature shifts, color shifts, uh, sl very slight value shifts, you know. Um, to keep it from being something from being so flat, uh, the drawing could be off. Maybe the composition just sucks and you didn't realize it. You started the whole painting, you got to the very end. You know, I've done that plenty of times where I didn't plan out the composition enough and it just sucks. So yeah, you know, staying motivated is, is like just working through all those problems. And sometimes you have to just take a day off, take a break and uh, go back to it when you feel you're ready.
thank you for your answer regarding your palette colors. I use 12 and I understand what you mean. If you have the right 10 or 12 colors, you can not only mix what you may need, but have color harmony. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, you can do it with just nine colors, eight colors. You don't really have to have like 10. You know, if I wanted, I could get rid of like lemon yellow or get rid of, uh, you know, some of the convenience colors and stuff. But, you know, like I said, it's just, it, it's, you know, when you have to just mix something quick, and and knowing what mixtures you made you know like viridian and orange you know what that's going to mix make you know it's very easy to get that mixture again uh, that one self-portrait from a while back was amazing to be honest where can i see self-portrait um, I actually have it right over here. Let me uh, get it. I unsubscribe. Sorry, I'm just not into this channel anymore. Hey, no worries. You don't have to be subscribed to me forever. I don't, you know, no hard feelings, bro. So here's the self-portrait. I did this... Uh, Two years ago now. Two years ago, I think. So. Here we go. I'm always looking at you. Yeah. I think my skin tone's a little too pale, too cool. But, um, not a bad effort for my first time ever doing, like, a portrait like that. Okay. I know this has nothing to do with art, but what do you think of this whole net neutrality thing? Oh man. Everything everything becomes political nowadays, you know? And uh, I don't really know enough about it. I know that everyone has been against, or um, most of the media, everybody has been for net neutrality. Um, and from what I understand, I mean, I guess it's a, it seems like a good thing to have, you know, treating everything, treating the internet the same. Um, uh, we don't have it anymore, so it doesn't really matter, but, um, I think, see, this is the interesting thing. And I, I thought, because my, my girlfriend and, and I got into an argument about this because I started reading the other side of it, you know, because I all the media and everybody was saying, you know, we need to save net neutrality, save this, save that. And I was like, okay, let me see the, uh, I want to know the other side because I'm very, there's nothing, there's almost nothing that offends me. And I'm being honest, like, it is very, very hard to, you know, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of something that can offend me. And I can't think of it. Um, you know, maybe like a crappy uh, YouTube comment of somebody saying, you know, uh, this painting sucks or, blah, you know, but even now I'm kind of like, I'm kind of over that. I used to get like pissed off about that stuff, but, um, you know, it is what it is now, but I don't really care. But I'm trying to think of something that like legit, you know, some kind of political thing that really offends me. And nothing, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm open, I'm open-minded to everything, to anything, everything. I look at both sides. I try to see, I try to be object, objective as possible. And I try not to even believe my own beliefs. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I try to be no dogma, no affiliations no i'm not red i'm not blue i'm not blood i'm not crip i'm not uh you know this gang that gang that name brand if you look at me i'm always wearing a plain shirt um soon i want to get shirts with my logo on them schaefer art but other than that you know i don't subscribe to anything so i i was reading the other side of net neutrality and i kind of get i kind of understand their idea like Look, we shouldn't treat all transmissions on the internet the same. 
you know, if when you send something in the mail, if you're sending a huge heavy box, that's way different than sending, you know, a letter in an envelope. It costs different. There's a different process. You know, it goes on a truck. You know, it's it's just different. So if you're watching a streaming a movie or if you're just going to a light website, maybe there's a difference. I don't know enough about it. I'm not like some tech geek guy that knows about all this different stuff. Um, I think it's interesting that potentially these corporations, um, you know, like com, you know, I have Comcast, so like being, you know, Comcast being able to say, oh, you know, now you have to buy Netflix or now you have to buy Hulu from us for this much a month. I think that's interesting. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that's kind of stupid. And I don't think people are going to want to pay for that. And here's the interesting thing. So I was thinking, okay, if companies start doing that and people, the public doesn't want that, it's going to open up competition. This, This is my theory, how I'm seeing it. There's going to be other companies that pop up that go, hey, we give you Netflix for free. We don't charge for this Netflix. You know, that's what always happens. Things open up. People go, people start, there's going to be competition. So then everybody's going to go, okay, screw Comcast. We're going to go to this better one that has lower prices and they only charge you for this one thing instead of, you know, a million different things. You know, I don't know. But I, I think it's, I think... You know, I, I don't know that it's going to be horrible like everybody thinks, but I don't know that it's going to be great either. Um, we're getting to interesting times, folks, you know, just in the world. The, you know, technology is going to get crazy. There's there's AI is going to be crazy, you know, in the next 20 or 30 years. Um, there's already crazy stuff going on in the world, um, and it's only going to get crazier with technology and stuff like that. And... Um, you know, nowadays corporations and the government are really not separate, and it's it's kind of a shame. You know, the Supreme Court ruling a few years back that a corporation is the same as a person. I mean, that's where we that's where you know things are rigged. This is a rigged system. You know, things are going downhill. That's there's no way there's no way Walmart is the same as me. You know what I mean? That's just that's just ludicrous. That's ridiculous. Um, that's my opinion though. But anyway, let's get back to it. I also have had the same experience that to get better, even though it still takes time, one must keep painting and as often as possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I unsubscribed. I'm sorry. I just got bored. Hope you grow. No worries, bro. No worries. I think it's just a kid, man. It's not a big deal. Um... A lot of comments here. Let me get through here. Let me get through these. Do you have any YouTube advice for new artists? I just started an art channel and it's super tiny. Well, Rebecca, um, YouTube is a tricky thing. I, luckily, I started a few years ago and and um, there wasn't as much going on back then when I started, like the end of 2012. I think is when I kind of put up my first videos and then I really hit it hard in like 2012, 2013. And there wasn't a lot of people talking about certain things like really chronicling their art journey and, and, you know, just talking about certain things that I was talking about, you know, like um, struggling with art. And, you know, I started, I was doing daily videos and, it's basically, it just, it's putting in a lot, a lot, a lot of effort. And if you can do, basically just put out as much content as possible. With social media nowadays, I mean, you got to do it daily if you can. And it's something I've been thinking about kind of starting up again, but I just can't do it right now. But I've been at least trying to do it daily, like on Facebook or Instagram, or at least every other day. And because... People's, you know, attention span these days is so short. I'm amazed at how many people still know who I am on YouTube and still follow me because I don't post videos as much anymore. I just do a live stream every two weeks or something and uh, occasionally post a video because people's attention span is so 
you know, quick now that you have to keep putting stuff out there. Otherwise people forget about you. And uh, really it's basically just work harder than anybody else and also get your work to be a better quality than everybody else. It, you know, it's, that's really the name of the game. You know what I mean? Make better quality videos, do better quality work, um, and post more often and, and post valuable stuff. Um, you know, something I want to get back into is instead of like teaching or, you know, whatever, you know, giving advice and stuff, I want to just document my journey, you know, just get into documenting, you know, what I'm doing daily with this art stuff and just show like, Hey, this is what I did today. I'm working on this painting. You know, it sucks right now. And I'm just like, you know, trying to figure out what I'm should be doing, you know, should I be, you know, should I spend my money on Facebook ads, you know, to sell my artwork, you know, what kind of things should I be doing? And, um, yeah, YouTube is, is an interesting thing. You know, there's so much, there's so many people out there with just, I'm sorry to say it, like just crappy art that are making tutorials that like shouldn't even be doing it. And I've kind of just been backing away from that because I don't even want to be involved. You know, I don't even want to be putting out tutorials or things like that that much anymore it's more of like i want to get my work to like a really good quality and just work focus on selling my art and then like just documenting my journey i, I think the best way to do youtube nowadays is to just document what you're doing as an artist you know start doing daily vlogs and, and just chronicle your art journey it'll be cool to look back on anyway you know you know, looking at some of my older videos now from like when I first started, it's funny to watch them and look back at, you know, it's like, wow, I've come a long, long way. So, yeah. Oh, can you tell how to clean a palette? I have like a year's worth of dry paint and I don't know how to clean it. Okay, what kind of palette do you have? Is it a glass or is it wood? What kind of palette do you have? I use a glass palette and I have a razor blade scraper that I got from uh, the hardware store. You know, it's a little metal thing. You you have a button and it slides out and there's a razor blade in it and you can just scrape it right off the glass. Um, that's one way to do it. You could probably do the same on wood. Just be careful not to like dig into it as much. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what my cat's doing. I hear her, but I uh, don't see her. Um, and also like if you have, you, you know, usually what I use is rubbing alcohol to clean my palette. It kind of like loosens up the paint and then you can scrape it off real cleanly, real easily. Hey. <laughs> my cat's up on the edge of my balcony. It's like a 20 foot drop and she's walking across. She hasn't done that in a long time. Hey. She's being wild right now. Are you a fan of Julian Marrow Smith from Shifting Light website? If you haven't heard of him, I would bet you'd love and appreciate his website, Daily Paintings at Serious High Loose Realism Style. Yeah, I've, I saw his work years ago. Really inspiring stuff. I mean, really cool, cool work. You know, I, I think he found his little niche of, of what he likes to do. And... Uh, you know, that's perfect for him, you know. If it works, that's what you do. Um, can we get a closer look at the painting on the easel, even if still in process? It looks very interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, give me a second. Um, it's still wet and it's kind of big, so... Um, I'm going to just leave it on the easel and just move my easel forward. Let me see if that works. So this is this is a painting from a vacation I took uh, back in August. If you guys saw the video, it's going down uh, Interstate 395 in the Eastern Sierras, and uh, this is one of the kind of the views that I saw.
So there's some mountains off in the distance here. Um, there was actually uh, a distant fire um, and there was a lot of smoke. So that's what this is. Um, there was some fire over the hills on the other side. So that's kind of, uh, it was interesting to, to see that. Um, and then this is kind of just, uh, you know, some kind of desert grasses and stuff over the hill. And um, I've kind of really on this side, is something I'm kind of still working on, but um, I really toned the contrast down here um, because of that slope, you know, I don't want to, your eye to move right off the canvas. So I really grayed things down, softened it down over here and softened this peak up here. Um, and most of the contrast is right in the center here. So I have all these lines leading you right there where those trees are. So that's where the most contrast is and that's where all these lines are leading. So that's kind of my focal area and, and I'm, I might enhance it a little bit. You know, I'm gonna have some thicker paint in that area and maybe some uh, heightened lights here, like I have here, some lights here, move them over here, um, you know, and really put some thicker paint where that smoke is and I have some thick paint on the trees there. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool and um, You know, I want to tone down that mountain a bit. I kind of had some snow on the mountains. It was really bright. So I kind of just swiped it off real quick. Um, so yeah, that's something I'm working on right now. And also I might, um, right in here, um, there's some uh, dirt and stuff, but I, I might want to carve it out just a little bit more. Um, I'm kind of keeping this area out of focus because I want the focus to be here. Um, so this is all very soft, as you can see there. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm working on. Sorry, there's so many comments here, guys. I'm trying to catch up, trying to catch up. Hi, I love your work. Thank you, I love you. <laughs> no, thanks, appreciate it. Thank you for your answer on staying motivated and stepping back, I love your work. No problem, bro, thanks. Thanks for the question, I appreciate it and uh, hope it was helpful. Very nice self-portrait, thanks, I appreciate it. RIP net neutrality, yeah, I guess so, you know. The internet was fine back in 2015 before the net neutrality legislation and it'll be fine today. Good point. Yeah, exactly. See, that's that's kind of what I was thinking too, you know. The internet's been fine since 2006, you know. It's, it's slowly evolving. You know, there's a lot of things have happened, you know, Netflix, YouTube, all these things came up. Um, but, you know, it was all fine back then. If they're going to screw with it now, um, it's just going to bring innovation. Like I was saying, companies are going to pop up and they're going to they're going to say, "Look, we're going to give this stuff for free." You know, because it's, it's gonna, they're going to make more money. Be contrarian. Your opinion is empowered by being able to argue it, argue the opposite sides. Yeah, yeah. I think I know what you mean. You know, I just like seeing different perspectives. I've learned so much. I, I'm always learning all the time. And it, it's so important to have perspective on any issue. And, uh, you know, I've been watching videos on YouTube lately and, and a guy that's, you know, 40 years old, you know, entrepreneur telling people in their 20s, like my age, telling us, man, you guys are so young, you have so much time, you have to be patient. And for me, I'm like, man, I need to, you know, do this quick, I, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, when I get to 40, I'm still going to feel young, you know what I mean? Like, it, there's still going to be so much time left. You know, it's all perspective. Everything is perspective. And, you know, I definitely buy a Schaefer Art shirt. Well, I got, I got one person that would buy a Schaefer Art shirt. Sweet. So I'll make like five bucks. <laughs> uh, Jesus loves you. That's great. Um, 
you know. I, I never met the guy, so I don't I don't know. How do you draw a small circle? You um you don't draw a big circle and you draw a small circle. I don't know. You pick up the pencil, put it in your hand, draw a small, small circle. How small is a small circle? Everything's relative. Is there such thing as a small circle? Or is there only a smaller circle? I don't know. Glass palette. Yeah, yeah, glass palette. Get a, get a razor blade scraper. Razor blade scraper, it's like two bucks. See, mine is like dirty as heck. But, uh, boom, razor blade. And this one, I use a palette knife and I stick it in there and I can pop the razor blade out, put a new one in when this one gets dull, uh, which is usually pretty quick. But So you buy a pack of razor blades, buy one of these. You can scrape it off the glass palette, no problem. That's, that's the way to do it. And then after you scrape that off, or if you're having, uh, yeah, after you scrape that off, get a cotton ball with rubbing alcohol and then just kind of like, uh, almost like soak the cotton ball like halfway to where you can, you can kind of feel it getting moist in rubbing alcohol and then just rub it on your palate. And do, I usually do that like two or three times with like two or three cotton balls. So I, I just do it once, it gets real dirty, throw that one away, do another one. And then it's pretty clean. Um, so that, that's, that's how you handle um, cleaning the palette. Talking on camera is hard. Yeah, it, it definitely is, especially the first time you do it. Go back and watch my first videos. Actually, don't. Just I'm just kidding. But seriously, if you go back and watch my first videos, I sucked at talking on camera. And when I first started, I was so nervous. You know, I have, like, this camera, and when I would go and start it, and I would sit down to, to film a video, I was so nervous to talk in front of the camera. Like, and it's hilarious because now I can just turn this thing on and just boom, 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 ramble all day, just like I'm doing now on the live stream. You know, you just build up confidence. Can we see the cat? What's her name? Her name is Kitty because I named her when I was 15 and I was not creative. I I'm, I'm still suck at names and Kitty was the first thing I ever called her and it just stuck. Um, she's actually right here now. Let me see if I can grab her. You know, the name to me isn't that big of a deal. I call her uh, Little Buddy. She's my little buddy. There you go. You gonna say hello? No? She only meows when she's hungry. I just fed her about an hour and a half ago. You're gonna meow? You getting angry because I'm holding you? She doesn't like being held that much. She's uh, very independent. Huh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Very angry. She's a good kitty though. She's small, she's only seven pounds and she's uh, 12 and a half years old. So anyway. What do you think about pretty art? Do you personally consider that art? Uh, what do you mean? I'm not sure what you mean by pretty art. As opposed to ugly art? I'm not sure what, what you mean. If you could elaborate on that, I'll, I'll answer it. Art that is pretty. <laughs> what is the worst art tutorial channel in your opinion? Oh, I don't know, dude. I, I don't really follow that many. Um, tutorial channels I just you know I've I've searched and seen a few but I'm, I'm not gonna I, I don't know I, I don't really follow I you know I don't really watch a lot of YouTube videos anymore as much um, you know there's a few channels that I follow that are, are not art related you know like uh, Joe Rogan's podcast and just a, a few other channels um, that I kind of listen to while I'm painting you know longer videos and um, I don't really watch YouTube videos because I'm always just I'm always working on stuff, you know, I'm working on my website or working on painting or working on uh, editing videos for, for future paintings or creating uh, 
content or I'm doing something, you know, and I, I don't really, even if I knew you tutorial channels, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus like that. What would you say to a person learning how to draw? I would, I would say, do you really want to learn how to draw? And, um, why do you want to learn how to draw? Is it something you're very passionate about? And if you are passionate about it, start doing it more. I would say, you know, how, how long every day are you spending, learn, you know, drawing? If it's only like five minutes and you're probably not that passionate about it, um, I would say just start spending as much time every day, spend two to three hours every day drawing from life, you know, drawing whatever you can, whatever you're interested in, and do it more. Because people that are doing it, if you want to get to a professional level, then you need to be working just as hard as those artists, if not harder, if you want to reach their level uh, quickly. Um, you know, some, it's, you know it's, it's almost like whoever works the hardest is going to win. And, um, you know, not really win, but just, you know, they're going to be... The, the quality of the work is going to be up there and, and that's where you want to get to. So it's just about putting the work in and, um, and you know, with painting and stuff, it's interesting because some people can have like this natural innate quality, you know, whether they're just good at certain things and it, it is what it is. You know, if there's plenty of things that I suck at, there's plenty of things that a lot of people suck at and, uh, you can't worry about it. You just have to just work through it. Do you paint acrylic only or... I don't use acrylics anymore. I only paint with oil paints. And I'm going to experiment with gouache or watercolor eventually, probably. But um, yeah, only oils now. I used to use acrylics in the past. I have a lot of videos on acrylics. Probably more so than oils. But um, yeah, I only use oils now. And I do graphite sometimes. Or charcoal. I like how you captured the smoke and the mountain in the distance. The foreground gives it great depth. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something I was really trying to focus on is getting the foreground to make it look like it's coming toward you and kind of rolling downward. You know, having this, these bigger bushes and stuff. And then as it gets back, it just kind of flattens out you know, real, real small. Um, it's always, a, it can be a challenging thing, but uh, I think I almost nailed it on this one. I'm getting close. Um, yeah, I'm liking where it's going. So we'll see how it turns out. Um, I'll probably post it in the next week or two, most likely. If it turns out good, I'll probably post it online. I always hate kind of posting my images because the image, I just can never get the photograph to really look like the artwork. And people end up judging the photograph and say, oh, this looks wrong or this is, you know, the trees don't look like they're this and blah, blah. And it's like, you know, it, it, it looks different in person. It is, you know, it's just how it is. So it is what it is. They call it that just because it's pretty. For example, like a girl with flowers and butterflies around her or something. Lots of people don't call that art because it lacks depth. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to see like the specific style you're talking about. Um, are you talking more like kind of a, a childish cartoony vibe, you know, cartoony look? Or are you talking more like really high quality, you know, figures and portraits with, you know, girls in dresses or, you know, girls out in nature and stuff. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not sure where you're, where you're going with that. You know, do you have an example of like someone that paint, like what their name is, you know, an artist? Where do you sell your art on your site? Yeah, I do sell some art on my site. Um, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking eventually this next year to do some, uh, crafts, really high quality craft shows and art shows and stuff. But um, for now, yeah, I just sell on my website. Or if somebody just messages me, I can, I'll sell that way. Um, uh, oh, bro. I don't know if you're still watching. Frank the Tank, son. 
Are you still here, man? I don't know if you are, but uh, thanks for stopping by, bro. It's been a while, dude. I'm surprised you randomly found me on YouTube here. I'm so happy for you that you have so many subscribers now. You deserve even more. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, it's always going up every day. You know, I'm getting like uh, five, four to 5,000 subscribers a month or something. I don't know. It's pretty cool. I mean, I haven't really put up any videos, so it's cool that it just keeps going up, you know. I guess that's the world we live in now. Man, my homie Frank the Tank. I went to school with him. Back in, uh, I think, fifth grade, man, that's when we started chilling. We used to always draw in class and stuff. And Kitty is pretty. Thank you. I have two myself. Yeah, she's a she's a she's a good cat. She's my little buddy. My two cats are Kitty and Kitty too. <laughs> uh, Joe Rogan, yeah, his podcast is pretty cool. Um, I haven't really watched any of the latest ones. I'm not really into what he's been talking about, but I, I like all the interesting ones, like uh, ones with Randall Carlson or Graham Hancock, you know, stuff like that, really interesting. Uh, when he has some interesting folks on, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, just cool science, science and stuff like that. I guess my homie Frank ain't on anymore. Oh, well, he stopped by. Uh, are landscapes your favorite thing to paint? If so, do you know why? You know, ah. Uh, I think they are. There's a small part of me, probably like 10% of me wants to paint portraits and figures. Maybe even more, maybe like 15 to 20%. Um, I'm really torn on it. Uh, I may eventually get into like portraits and figures and maybe even merge you know, painting like red these redwoods with figures in them and maybe getting getting into portraits and stuff. You know, something I've I've noticed. Um I don't know. I, I just I'm always I'm drawn like I was saying earlier, um an artist that I really like is Nick Alm N I C K A L a-L-M, Nick Alm, and he does only like portraits and figures. There's like no landscapes in his, you know, very little he'll have, sometimes he'll have like a tree in it or something, but it's not the focus. So it's like what draws me to that, to his work, you know, and it, it's like the portraits and the figures, and I've always been drawn to like Sargent's work, and he's like mostly known for his portraits and figures. And a lot of the greatest artists that are that are known, you know, nowadays, Jeremy Lipking, Richard Schmidt, I mean, the list goes on. You can, there's, you know, Aaron West, uh, Westerberg, Jeffrey Watts. I mean, there's just a ton of artists nowadays. And mostly all of them are known There's for portraits. They're all, and, and not saying that I want to do portraits just so I can be like a famous artist or whatever. You know, that's not really my, my thing, but... There's a part of me that just wants to, you know, experiment with, with different concepts that involve humans. And, like, I, I think it's something everyone can relate to, maybe even more so than, than landscapes. Um, just because, you know, we're all human at the end of the day. And, like, it's, it's more of like a universal theme. Because some people just aren't into landscapes. Like, they just, it's just not you know, what they're into. Um, 
But yeah, I'm definitely, I, I definitely love nature and I'm into to landscapes and stuff. So that's kind of why I love doing it. And I paint what I love, you know, when I was at this place, you know, I, I spent all morning at this place and actually, um, I walked on a little trail that way. Um, actually right that way off, off the scene here is a parking lot that I parked my car on. And then even further that way was this little trail and I painted plain air. I painted, uh, uh, Mammoth Mountain. Um, I painted plain air of Mammoth Mountain and it was, I was up at like 9,300 feet in elevation and I painted up there in the snow. Uh, it was awesome. I mean, it's just awesome being up in the Eastern Sierras and stuff. So I mean, that that's kind of why I love landscapes, I guess. And trees, obviously. You know, I just, you know, these these big trees, It's I just haven't seen many people painting them. And for me, I, I just love being, walking the trails and seeing the, the sequoias and redwoods and stuff. And, like, I'm just in awe of these trees. And I'm like, you know, I just want to capture their beauty. And, you know, that's just why I do it, you know. I want to make cartoons, not super realistic paintings, and I've been doing it for 15 minutes every day. I love live streams. It feels so friendly. Message retracted. Okay, I'm not sure why a message was retracted. But, uh, yeah, 15 minutes a day, I mean, I mean, it's good, but if you could spend, uh, you know, two hours every day, I mean, if you really want to do it, you know, after dinner, just draw till you go to bed. I mean, what's wrong with that? You know, get off of the computer, get off of YouTube, stop watching videos, stop watching TV, start drawing more, you know? I mean, it's, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to hear that you're drawing every day, at least for a little bit. That's, that's definitely good, but if you can do it more, that's more is always better, usually, uh, unless it's something like poisonous. But, um, I like his podcast. I don't like his stance on vegans, though. Sad face. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. Um, I just don't listen to him, you know, because I'm, I'm mostly vegan myself. So, like, I, I just... Um, I, I kind of get where he's coming from for what he says a lot of it because a lot of the vegans out there are very, like, passionate. And it just... A lot of vegans become kind of what they're against you know they they get like a violent attitude toward it and like you know i'm more of like look people are going to eat meat people are going to do what they want to do i'm going to focus on myself and i'm going to be the change i want to see in the world you know what i mean so that's kind of how i approach it you know I, i've i've taken the route of like trying to get my family into it and stuff and they're just not into it. you know people just aren't going to change if they don't if people don't want to do something they're not going to do it, you know, so it is what it is. Dude, paint those portraits and figures. You can be the next Thomas Cole. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but I almost want to do, you know, Thomas Cole, I feel like he did like small figures and stuff. I want to do like larger figures within the painting, like have the figure be the focal point as well as the trees and stuff. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, I still have many more years to go. You know what I mean? I want to start uh, painting from life, from uh, models and stuff. So if I can if I can find some people to uh, pose for me, you know, once a week for a few hours and I'll pose for them, you know, and start getting better at portraits and figures because it's just not, not something I've ever done from life. Um, so that's something I kind of want to get into. Hola, amigos. How are we all doing? We should all be doing freaking great, son. <laughs> I think you'd be very successful with portraits, too. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I went through a little phase where I did, like, portrait gestures, you know, like, working from uh, photo references on my computer, and I would just give myself a time limit of, like, 40 minutes to an hour of small portraits. And I just, you know, I, some of them were pretty good. 
So I think I could do it. It's just like painting anything else. It's just shapes of color and value and getting the drawing down. So. You look like Prince Harry of Britain. Cool, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, I just don't have all the riches. Love this painting, beautiful. You're talking about this one right here? Thanks, I appreciate it, man, appreciate it. Sorry folks, I'm just kind of checking stuff, trying to see, uh, getting some messages here and stuff. Uh, what are using oils? I'm not sure what that, what are, I'm using, yeah, I use oils. Um, I usually paint with you talking in the background, it inspires me to do better, thank you. Hey, I appreciate it. I've been thinking about starting a podcast. I've been thinking about it for a lot of months, and uh, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm just going to start doing it. But uh, I'm not sure how consistent I'll be with it, but I have a lot of ideas. And um, yeah, let's just say that. Let's leave it there. I have a lot of ideas I want to do for the, for a podcast I think would be cool. And um you know, I've, I've listened to a lot of different podcasts and I've, a lot of them I feel are very boring. And uh, not that I'm like the most exciting guy ever, but at least a lot of the art podcasts are just, you know, I was listening to one the other day and the way they start out their intros is just, it's not interesting to me. You know, they're, they have, they're interviewing someone, but they start out like the first two or three, five minutes of, Oh yeah, I was painting this the other day, and uh, you know I wasn't uh, feeling it, and uh, you know this happened, and blah. And it's like I don't care, dude. I want to hear about the the artist you're gonna interview, you know. And they they're like, oh, so I'm gonna bring on the artist. You know, this artist is known for painting in this style and doing this. And it's like, just bring him on and start talking to him. You know what what's all this introduction for? Just get into it. You know. The one thing that's successful about Joe Rogan's podcast is like when you watch his, he gets right into it. He cuts right to the chase. You know, there's one podcast where he has Neil deGrasse Tyson on, the uh, um, astrophysicist on. And right in the first three seconds, he goes, you know, what's going on, Neil? I love your hat, man. What's up with, you know, what's going on with the hat you're wearing? You know, he, get, he sucks you right in. And then Neil deGrasse Tyson goes... Oh yeah, there, I got this online from uh, uh, you know, bigheads.com or something, you know, because he has a big head and he starts talking about, you know, how to measure to get your hat size. You know, you, you got to measure your head and then multiply it by pi to get the circumference. You know, it gets right into it. Not there's no introduction. Not that you need an introduction for Neil deGrasse Tyson, but my point is like, even if you don't know the other artists they're interviewing, you know, try to make it interesting, like. I don't know. I, I have some ideas for how I, I think um, I, I want to get into um, uh, you know doing podcasts and stuff because I, I think you know I would love to just start interviewing different artists that like nobody ever nobody even knows. You know what I mean? It could be one of you guys that are just, you know, follow me on YouTube. Like, I would love to just, uh, you know, be able to interview interview artists, give them, a, you know, some more, you know, try to get more people to know about them, you know, find out why artists do what they do, you know, why, like, if somebody likes painting boats and stuff, like, okay, why do you, what are you into, you know, how did you get into painting boats? You know, I think everybody has, like, an interesting story that, they could share, you know, and, and, and maybe it would even help them understand themselves even more, you know, kind of having a, an artist, you know, an artist type of conversation. Anyway, that's just me rambling. So, uh, 
But yeah, I've been thinking about starting a podcast because a lot of people have told me like they like listening to me while they paint. So it's like, you know, that would, and, and podcasts, you know, something I've learned is podcasts are becoming big because they save you time. You know, I listen to stuff. I can learn. I can learn a lot of different things, whether it's about business, art, whatever. I can listen to a podcast while I'm working, while I'm being productive. I can learn something and be even more productive. So podcasts are going to be huge, uh, I think, in the future. And they're already huge, but they're going to get even bigger because they're already going to they're going to save time because people aren't going to have time to sit there and watch a 45 minute video. But they can listen to a podcast on their phone while they're going for a jog or going to the store. You know, they get in their car. It's and you know they can stream it while they're going to work or whatever. You know, and I think that's that's huge. Hello, Brandon. Hi from Australia. Thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in from Australia. Is it daytime over there right now? It's 10 p.m. right here in in California. So, did you see the solar eclipse? Yes, I did. It wasn't a complete eclipse, but it was still pretty cool. Um, I had the little, I had, luckily, the day before the eclipse, I waited in a long line and I got the little film. I'm going to show you guys something real quick. So I got the little piece that they were giving out. They only had a very limited supply of these little, the, the film to look at, you know, The solar eclipse, you know what I mean? And uh, it's funny, you can see light bulbs very faintly through them. Um, so I, this is cardstock. I made, I put my, look, you see I taped them together. See that? See the tape here? And um, I kind of doubled it up on around the frame area. And this is the film. They had little pieces of film. They gave us a little sheet. So my girlfriend and I made uh made a few pairs of these and uh yeah it was fun and then of course my girlfriend found somebody dropped a pair and it was on her campus and she just picked them up so like i guess the next eclipse in like five years we have like four pairs just in case so we'll be ready for the next eclipse when it comes you know but uh yeah it was really cool i mean did did anybody else see it I didn't see the totality, but I, I, I did see it. It was pretty cool. Hell yeah, start a podcast. All right, I think I will. I'm not sure I'm not sure what to talk about when it's just me, but I I'll come up with something, you know, something useful for you guys that I can because you know you, you guys know me, I can just ramble on forever. Um I'm very fussy too when it comes to art content videos. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What kind of art content do you think people enjoy watching? Hmm, that's tough. I I think the way to go, I, I really I really think this, the way to go is to document your journey. You know, let me show you guys something. I, I For people that don't follow me on Instagram, um, I post a little story um, I try to post some stories every day, but this was earlier. Ah, it's not going to show up, huh? There we go. See, it's just, I'm just showing a video of like close up of the painting while I was in progress. See, there's me, time to begin. I'm just documenting. People will see this and just see that I'm, okay, I'm working on a painting. Here's a little bit close up. You know, I give a little teaser of what I'm working on. And, Somebody just sent me a message. They just replied to my uh, story and they said, you are on another level, bro. Appreciate it, whoever said that. Uh, so, so you know, it's I, I think getting people interested in your story and your journey is is really the way to go. Because I think most people, especially myself, you know, we're kind of not at the level where we can really teach you know what I mean like I don't want to teach people how to paint because everybody paints differently everybody has a different way to doing things and there's so many people out there trying to teach already and stuff I think really documenting what you're doing whether it's on a weekly basis or two two days a week just document what you're doing and try to 
I, I think over time people will be interested in in what you're doing and you know just like people like my audience people that that love nature love forests love trees and redwoods and you know views like this find me you know they they love the work i do and that's how they you know they found me on youtube and then they happen to like my work so they keep following me and then they just like seeing you know little tidbits of stuff that i'm doing and even live streams like this where i show you hey this is what i'm doing guys i have something to show you guys that i did the other day so at the beginning of the video i was saying that i went uh plain air painting um last sunday i found a group and i didn't have any panels i didn't i have a wet panel carrier for six by eight panels and i had no six by eight panels so i was like all i have is larger panels the smallest i had was an eight by ten a bunch of eight by tens and i only had larger ones and i was like damn what am i going to do because we're playing our painting all day i'm going to do like four or five paintings what am i going to do so and this was the day before i had to figure out something so I built a wet panel carrier from cardboard, duct tape, cardboard, I made a little cap, a lid, and there's some dowels. I had some wooden dowels laying around, so I hot glued them in here. This was a flat box, flat piece of cardboard. I measured it out. I hot glued the dowels in there, measured it all out, and folded it up, and uh, hot glued it shut, and then I I made the top and the bottom, and then I glued, hot glued the bottom, or did I hot glue the bottom? Yeah, I hot glued the bottom on each. It's kind of just like the top, um, except I had the flaps. I didn't have these flaps taped, and I just glued each flap up and onto the box, and then I taped it, and uh, now it has a bottom. And, uh, so now I have an 8x10 wet panel carrier. So, you know, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way to do it. You know what I mean? That's really what I've been doing for years. If you go back on my YouTube, at the very beginning, I have a video where I created my very first easel ever that I ever had. My very first easel I made out of cardboard. It was just a triangle. It was just a triangle made out of cardboard and I set it on a tabletop and I could, and it had like a little lip out on the bottom. So it was like a triangle with like part of the flap coming out. And I would just set my little panel on there, you know, up against the triangle and paint on it. And that was my very first easel. You know, I had a box, I didn't have money. You know, I just, that's what I did, I made it. And I also made a brush holder back here. I don't think I ever showed you guys on YouTube this. I made a brush holder that's over here on the shelf out of cardboard. Um, so let, let me get to the comments here. I got a lot of comments I haven't touched on. Um, do you watch Alex Jones? Uh, no, not currently. I was into Alex Jones back in... 2006 to 2008 I got really into like conspiracy theories and stuff like that but I'm not really into it as much anymore um but I'll definitely say like you know I'm not into politics I'm not into what the media has to say especially nowadays it's all just clickbait stuff you know they're not into giving you the truth you know what I mean so I kind of just live my life and not really worry about any of that stuff Most of are. What's the best way to learn how to draw? Do it as much as you can. Learn as much as you can. Go on YouTube, type in learn how to draw, and um, watch all the videos. Go to Google, type in learn how to draw, read as much as you can. And then take all that knowledge you just learned and spend all your time drawing. Get a sketchbook, fill up a whole sketchbook, and just fill up a sketchbook every week. Fill up the entire sketchbook every week or every two weeks, whatever it is. Front and back, pages front and back. 
you know, and, and just draw as much as you can from life. Boom. So I just got here and I looked up at your, looked at your cup video and my replica looks great. You helped me out even though it's just a cup. Good to hear. My musician son does a weekly podcast. Oh, that's cool. Uh, what does he do a podcast on about music? Just, just curious. Like what kind of angle does he approach it? Copying master's work, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good way to get good at drawing too. You know, copying master drawings. Go, look at master paintings and stuff and, and draw draw what they painted. 4 p.m. in Australia. Wow, that's pretty cool. I live in Arizona pretty close, yeah? So it's 11 p.m. here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably uh, 20 hours away, 20-hour drive from Aust- from Australia, from Arizona, something like that. But yeah, it's it's ten fifteen here now. Schaefer, what's up, dude? What's going on? Uh, what's going on, bro? Nice to see you here. Hope you've been doing well. Hope the family's been doing well. Hope the job's been going well. The graphic design, bro. You're killing it. Yeah, using the welding the welding hood to see it and nearly blinded yourself like then at the eclipse. Yeah, my dad was saying he was trying to do the same thing, but yeah, you gotta have those you gotta have that film. Man, it was it was pretty epic. Really cool to see. I actually got a picture on my phone of the eclipse through the film. It was pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Thanks you guys for following me on Instagram. I appreciate it. Hope you're in, hope you've been enjoying the posts and stuff. You know, I, I'm trying to keep it interesting and just post different stuff. You know, I just saw this box vid on your Instagram. Pretty really cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That wet panel carrier. What other what other interests do you have besides painting? Maybe music, science, psychology, sculpture. Um, you know, my biggest interest is painting, but um. You know, whoa. Um, you know, I'm kind of into. Uh, I'm trying to think, just kind of like weird stuff. You know, I'm, I'm into like useless knowledge type of stuff. But, you know, I'm into like science and geology and the stars and just knowing little facts about stuff. Um, you know, I'm into like different theories and stuff. Like I was saying earlier, like the Joe Rogan podcast, if you watch, there's one of his pod, there's probably like three or four of his podcasts. If you type in Joe Rogan and then Randall Carlson, very interesting guy, Randall Carlson. He does, uh, he's a geologist, but he also has, you know, he has interesting theories on like, uh, or at least has looked into interesting theories about the, about the Sphinx and that. It looks the Sphinx may be older than we actually than academia says it is, um, and older than G- Egyptologists you know think it is, and I think he's probably right. Um, but I, I don't know anything. But just knowing how Egypt you know the mainstream is, you know they kind of set the rule and then just go with that. You know that they're, they're not very scientific about it anymore. But, uh, you know, there's just a bunch of really interesting stuff out there. And, you know, I I just, it's cool to, like, speculate because who really knows? But, um, you know, I'm just into a lot of just learning about stuff. You know, I'm I'm really into plants and nature, um, you know, learning about, uh, you know, I've I've listened to podcasts about mushrooms and and different kinds of, you know, I'm into health. I'm really into, like, eating healthy and, and trying to, you know, sunbathing for vitamin D, you know, I've been trying last summer, I, I was trying to sunbathe as much as I could every day at solar noon. So I would, I would put on like, uh, you know, I'd go out and just like my swimming trunks and just go out by the pool and just sunbathe for uh, 20 minutes on each side. And I just try to be healthy, man. You know, I've, I've read, I've learned a lot, a lot, a lot about health. And uh, it's something I've just been every year. I'm just trying to strive to be healthier and healthier you know, I'm just a weird dude, man. I'm just into just, I'm just into different stuff. 
you know, I'm into like technology, making videos, um, into drawing, uh, you know, I love nature, hiking, exploring, traveling, stuff like that, you know, I'm into, oh, you know what, I'm going to show you guys, uh, here's some, uh, graphic design work that I do. This is, this is a sample. I got a sample stock, but, uh, this is like a flyer that I made for a uh, children's hospital. And these are, um, one of the logos I designed, but, um, it's actually, there's, uh, like three different, um, facilities and they're all kind of a similar logo. And, uh, you know, just to, this is kind of the color scheme and I kind of just use different gradients and stuff, very colorful. Um, you know, and I go and take all these photos of the children's hospital. So this is kind of the stuff that I do um, for my day job. And here's kind of like a folder that I created. Um, you know, when you fold it like this, it becomes like a folder. So there's like the front and then there's the three facilities that um, the company I work for owns. So yeah, I've let, this last year we kind of figured out and there's another logo I did. So this is kind of like just stuff that I figured out this whole last year, you know, this whole, all this marketing and photograph stuff all happened this last year. So I, I came up with these colors from scratch and uh, they really liked them and stuff. So I've just been, uh, that's kind of what I do for my day job. Here's another. This is going to be a brochure that we're making, you know, one of the spreads in the brochure. So it's going to be folded like that. So a lot of interesting stuff. So I'm into a lot of different things. Anyway, sorry, I got off on a tangent there. Um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. Hey bro, thanks for the uh, thanks for the little tip, man. The ten bucks, bro. Roads design, I appreciate it, man. I gotta next time I come to Southern California, man. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna we're gonna chill for uh, we'll get some lunch or something. You know what I mean? Or dinner. Um, next time I come to Southern California, I'm gonna definitely let you know, man. Um, the last times I've been down there, it's just been like really, you know, I had to be down there really quick. You know, just like a day or two and. Um, just had a lot on the agenda, you know what I mean? But next time, man, I'm going to hit you up for real, but I, I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. I'll definitely, uh, put it to good use. 112 AM in, F in Florida. Good night. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for tuning in. Where do you get your inspiration from? Just really curious. From nature, from life, you know, I just go and take photos, you know, like stuff like these redwood forests, you know, I go and travel there and uh, take photos. And um, I, I love looking at a bunch of different artists. Um, uh, you know, books like this, Andrew Zorn, see there's the portraits and figures again, you know what I mean? Um, so it's just books like this. I just go and look through these books, you know, and uh, just, just get inspired, get inspired. You know, when I, when I visit somewhere and I just see something like this, I'm just like, I got to paint that, you know? So there's one of the paintings I recently did. This has become one of my favorite paintings. At first, I really didn't like it. And uh, it's really growing on me. It's one of my favorite paintings I've done so far. And uh, this one I, I did in one one session, believe it or not. So it's funny how that happens sometimes. But uh, thanks for your knowledge about drawing. Yep, appreciate it. I want to start oil painting, but I don't really know how mediums work. Man, this is oh, perfect, perfect. I'm so glad you asked this. Do you think they're important? If so, what do you do to make sure you don't inhale any toxins? This is so... So glad you, you asked this question. Mediums, you don't need to use any mediums, okay? That's number one. 
Uh, you can use paint straight from the tube. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what I do. I don't use any mediums. What I do use is solvent, and that um, can be toxic. I mean, all solvents are toxic, basically. But there are solvents that are less toxic than others. So what I've recently been using right here in this little can, I just switched from Gamsol. I no longer use Gamsol. I'm done with Gamsol. Gamsol is made by Gamblin, and it's a petroleum product. If you read the... the Unfortunately, I don't have the bottle on me because I got rid of the bottle. I used the rest of it and I got rid of the bottle. It says dangerous, flammable, you know, all solvents are like flammable, but, you know, toxic, do not inhale, fatal if swallow, you know, all this stuff. It's 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 dangerous to use. It's a petroleum product. It's, it's basically like gasoline, you know, it's like this. And it's odorless, so you don't know. So you, you can have it, you can be using it all day and you don't really know how much you're inhaling. You know, it's just not good. So I've been using... This stuff, Lavender Brush Cleaner by Chelsea Classical Studio. It's a little more expensive than Gamsol, but it's worth it because, especially, I just I just ordered a big bottle of it, a 32 ounce. It's the biggest one I could buy, and it's the cheapest if you do it that way. It was only like 29 bucks or 34 bucks, something like that. Um, and it smells, it smells like lavender. It's made from... 100% fruit and flower natural oil essences of lavender. It's very strong smelling. So when I first used this, um, I was very put off by it because it kind of gave me a headache from using it in my apartment. Um, so you definitely want to like open a window or something if, or be in a ventilated area. But I'm kind of getting used to it now. But uh, yeah, <sighs> it's really strong. Um, but it's non-toxic, contains no petroleum products. You can also, there's also soy-based solvents you can use that are non-toxic as well. So, you know, you just have to be careful um, with what you use. This one has a warning, combustible skin irritant, eye, eye irritant, exposure may cause allergic reactions. So, got to be careful with solvents and stuff. Um, but the good thing about this lavender one is because it is so strong smelling, it makes me definitely way more aware of the solvent. Um, with Gamsol, you know, I would kind of just leave it open all day. You know, I would leave the, the lid off the thing all day and not really understand that this fumes are going everywhere and you're always inhaling it and it's just terrible. And with this, I'm way more cognizant of it being around because I smell it. And um, luckily it's not, a, it's not that toxic. Um, so, you know, avoid skin contact, wash hands immediately after use, do not eat or drink or smoke, keep away from eyes, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, I mean, that's, it would be stupid. If eye contact occurs, rinse with tap water, five to 10 minutes, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you can, you can use oil paints without solvents. It's just, I find it more difficult, but definitely you don't have to use mediums, you know, you don't have to use linseed oil or walnut oil or neo mcgill or any of that you don't have to use any mediums so i i start out by thinning the paint down and this stuff evaporates really quickly on the canvas so i can thin it down and then like in a minute or two it's already evaporated off and the paint's dry basically so then i can just use paint straight from the tube right on top of that and then you can get these if you could see the sky more closely i might I'll, I'll show you guys in a second here. You can get these transparent effects coming through. It's very beautiful. Um, and there's so many different ways to do it. You know, I'll show you guys here, actually. Now, look look at this foreground here. What, what it is is this golden color. I thin down like yellow ochre and brush that on, and it's a thin paint, dries quick. And then I brushed over it a cooler brown color kind of a grayish brown but I kind of dry brushed it so I'm letting the underpainting kind of show through and you get this beautiful um, transparent effect kind of this broken effect 
and it looks very natural and it's just it's it has a vibration um you know i did the same with this with the sky here i have kind of like an orangey um give me a second here guys if you guys can slightly see that see like especially over here i kind of have like this orange peeking through and it just creates a different effect rather than if, if the sky was just a solid blue, it would be kind of boring. So I kind of wanted, I always try to like play around with effects like that and stuff. Okay, let me, let me get going. Wow, Saturday morning, you must be in Europe. Saturday morning at 8.16, do you believe in aliens? Um, probably not, you know, I, I think I, I believe in the possibility of aliens, but probably not. They're probably not out there. Um, especially with all the space junk we have, it's, it's unreal the amount of space junk we have floating around our planet. If you look up how much space junk is around the earth right now. They actually, when they do launches into space, apparently, see, this is the stuff that I'm fascinated by that's just stupid. There's so much space junk that if, if they do a launch into space, they actually have to time when to launch so that they don't hit a big piece of space junk. I mean, it's, it's unreal. And they don't even know how to clean it up because the stuff is going like 18,000 miles an hour around the Earth. There's no way to capture it. Maybe one day they'll figure it out, but... Uh, Hey, everybody, if you're just tuning in, what's going on? Do you know who Edgar Casey is? That sounds familiar, but no, I don't. Read your question about my son's podcast. First, he chats about his week. Then his first song is a cover. Then he sings his own composition. He keeps the same formula every week. Really good that way. Oh, that's pretty cool. So he, he kind of like performs on his podcast. That's pretty cool. That's a good way to do it. I mean, that's a good, uh, that's a good promotional type of tool, you know? Oh, here's my podcast. Here's what's been going on with me. And then like, oh, here's a song. Listen to me sing. You know, like that's, that's, that's brilliant. I mean, that's, that's really good. Been watching you for years, Brandon, and always love how curious you are about so many things. Hey, I appreciate it. Good night, guys. Good night, MP. Thanks for joining. Uh, those little logos are great, man. Digging the gradients too. Thanks, man. Yeah, you know, it's for a children's hospital. So they wanted, you know, um, really bright colors and, you know, just simple logos and stuff. I actually, they already had branding done, but we, it's, it was horrible. It was like from 1995. It would look terrible. Um, so the logos I did were kind of a play on the old logos. Like one of them had a butterfly, one of them had a kite and one of them had balloons. So I kind of just did kind of these line drawings of those elements and then just redid, you know, I just re- did them so I didn't really have to come up with anything new per se but uh yeah you know I kind of just did what they you know they said here's what we kind of need um luckily I'm kind of at the administration level so like you know I talk directly with the owner of the company the owner is actually my girlfriend's dad that owns the company so I'm really close to to the administration and stuff so it's a pretty it's a pretty sweet little gig but uh I'm trying to get out of it and and paint paint for a living you know what i mean but uh yeah yeah for sure you can get odorless solvents that's what worries me about odorless you just never know what you don't smell yeah yeah that's what i you know you odorless isn't bad you know, I have like a soy based one that's not toxic and it's very low odor. And I, f I feel better about that because it's a soy base. It's, it's low odor. It's not toxic. Um, you know, it's just all around better. But when you're using Gamsol and it's funny because gambling is, is gambling's full of crap. I'm just going to say it. Um, and I <laughs> it's full of crap because on their site or somewhere, I saw somewhere in some advertisement, they said, the Gamsol is the safest, safest solve, artist solvent to use. And I'm like, that is bull crap. It's not, what makes it the safest? They're just, you know, it's just some bull crap marketing scheme. 
that they can just spout off, oh, Gamsol is the safest art, art, artist thing. No, it's not the safest, okay? It's not the safest one. It's, you know, they have a big danger thing. Oh, it's dangerous to inhale and blah, 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 blah. When you can get a lavender one that's not dangerous to inhale, it's, it's safe. It's a lot safer to breathe. That stuff just annoys me when they, you know, they just spout out. But see, artists don't even think about it. They just go, they say, oh, Gamsol, that's the safest one to use because they said it was the safest. No, it's not the safest. It's funny that they can even say that. But see, there's no, there's probably no regulation about it. You know, they, oh, we're the safest solvent to use. Sorry, you're not. Do you prep your canvas before you paint? If so, how many coats of gesso is best when doing landscapes? Love the effect in those two paintings. Thanks for sharing this tip. Yeah, it's a really cool, it's a really cool effect. Um, it's something that I'm always trying to play around with and I'm trying to add it more and more into my paintings. But uh, yeah, thinning the paint down and then using paint straight from the tube and using a very light pressure and varying the pressure, you know, you can get these really cool, um, textural effects and like getting that transparency, um, having the two colors kind of vibrating over, you know, it's just a, it's a beautiful effect when you can get it right. And really, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough thing to get right, but it's beautiful when you can do it. Um, when I, how I prep my canvas, I don't, I, I paint on an oil primed linen now, no gesso oil primed linen. And what I'm going to be doing eventually um, when I upgrade my apartment next year, I'm going to have my own room as a studio. It's going to be, it's going to be great. I can't wait. It's going to be a little more expensive every month to do. So instead of my rent being like 1200 a month, it's going to be like 1400 a month or something crazy. Um, but it's going to be worth it because uh, I'm going to have a one bedroom apartment. It's going to be, have my own little studio. Um, but this is what I'm going to eventually do. So right now I have, this is a piece of plywood, but I'm going to eventually get a big piece of plywood, have somebody cut them down for me. Um, I have some family out here, or my girlfriend's family, that would be glad to help me uh, cut up some custom-sized plywood. And then I'm going to... Uh, use some oil ground. This is lead oil ground, um, but I, I'm waiting for, um, Windsor and Newton has an oil-based ground that's not lead, and I wanna, this one takes like a week or two to dry, and the Windsor and Newton one dries in like 24 hours or two days, something like that. So I wanna try theirs, but it's out of stock everywhere, so I'm waiting for it in January, it should be back in stock, and I wanna order that one, but, um, this one was, I had a piece of uh, acrylic gesso canvas that I applied to this plywood. And then I just used, it's hard to see it, but I used this oil ground on top of it. So now it's an oil-based um, canvas. It's almost, it's almost dry. I did it like two or three days ago, but uh, it's still kind of setting up. So it's going to take a few more days. But uh, yeah, so, and this, you know, I wish you guys could see it, but you get, there we go. I did it with a, a bristle brush and you get some really interesting uh, textural effects. You can smooth it out with a palette knife. You know, there's a bunch of different things you can do, but uh, it gets a really, really cool effect. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that, it gets a really cool effect. This is one that I did, I wanted to show you. And I'm not sure I'm finished with this painting. It's been hanging on the wall for uh, a month or so and I'm not sure that I like it, but uh, I haven't posted it anywhere. I'm not sure that I completely like it, so I've been waiting. Um, I may go back over it and enhance some areas and stuff, but you can see all the different like texture in it. Like you can see the tree, it has like all these little bits and stuff coming through. Um, oh, there we go, there we go. If I can get the light on it the right way. Uh, you can just see kind of all the brush marks underneath. It's just really cool, it's a, it's a really cool effect. Um, 
and it feels really nice to paint over. So that's just something I'm, I'm, I'm working on. Um, sorry guys, I'm trying to go through these comments quick, but, uh, cause I got to get off here soon. It's just getting late and I'm running out of breath. How can you not believe in aliens? You should watch Ancient Aliens. <laughs> I have watched Ancient Aliens, not recently, but uh, that's a funny comment, Rebecca. I feel like me and you would get along pretty well. You seem pretty, uh, pretty cool. I didn't say I don't believe in aliens. I said I believe in the possibility of aliens. Okay, there's no to me. There's no evidence of aliens. So. Until I find some hard evidence, until I see some hard evidence, I'm not going to believe in aliens. You know, the pyramids and stuff, if you're talking like the pyramids being built and they have like little symbols and stuff of a light bulb and aliens and stuff, I think the ancients had, I think they were way more advanced, not like they had the internet and stuff. I think they had simple... Um, I think they were very smart, and I think they had simple ways of doing things that we just nowadays overlook, like how to build the pyramids. Like, we still can't figure it out nowadays. There's so many different theories about how they did it. But um, I think we're just, I think they probably very simply built them. I think there's a there's probably some kind of mechanism and way to build them and how they built them and the tools they had. We just don't know what they had back then or when, you know. I, I think there's a logical way to explain how all these things were built and how these stones were moved and how they built it so precisely. Um, we're just too stupid nowadays to even think about in simple terms. We're thinking in terms of like heavy machinery and all this stuff like we can't do that, but we're not thinking in terms of, of using pulleys and fulcrums. And, you know, when you have a big block, you can put a little stone under that block and you can spin a huge giant block. A guy's done it in his backyard. You know, you, there's, there's, there's got to be ways and the manpower that they had, there's simple ways that they could have done this stuff. Um, you know, moving a big giant block, there was a guy on the news like years ago. He, he had these big giant cement blocks that he made and by himself in his backyard, he took this giant cement block I mean, literally like 20 feet by five or six feet tall or something. And he stood it up by himself in his backyard. And it's very interesting. He dug a hole. And what he did was underneath the middle of it, he would dig underneath and he'd put a lot, he put a, uh, some wood. And eventually he'd get it to where he could, he could uh, weigh down one side of it and the other side would pop up. So he would wedge wood under the popped up side and then he would weigh down that side and it would pop up the other side and do the same thing. And eventually this thing, you just keep going back and forth. Eventually it raises up off the ground and then the big hole that it's going to go into is underneath it. And then, you know, you have the weights on one side, a fulcrum in the middle, and then it swings into the hole. You know, it's all, you have to be very precise about all this, not easy. But if you measure it out and do all this stuff, you know, there's very easy ways to do this stuff. You don't need heavy machinery. And if you had like, you know, 100 people working on this, I'm just saying there's probably ways that they could have built like pyramids and stuff. But I find all that stuff really interesting. But um, yeah, Ancient Aliens, it, it's a funny show, man. Edgar Casey was a psychic who said the Ark of the Covenant was under the Sphinx right paw. Okay, that's, I've probably heard, I've definitely probably heard that before. That's pretty interesting. They think, I think recently they've, they think they've found uh, some kind of tomb or some kind of area under the Sphinx that is actually hollow. Don't quote me on that, but I, I feel like I read that recently. Um, hey, Schaefer, really loved your How to Draw video series. It was awesome. No problem. Glad you enjoyed it. Um. I know it was like old crappy videos back in the day, but I'm glad uh, you still found them helpful. I only bring it up because it was on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's cool. I mean, he's into the, he was into the conspiracy theories and stuff back in the day, too. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff, you know, like JFK. It's like, you know, did Lee Harvey Oswald actually act alone? You know, maybe he could have, but I don't know. I find it very hard to believe, like, the whole magic bullet theory and stuff. I've, that's the whole part of it, you know, that I, I agree with Joe Rogan is, like, the magic bullet theory is, like, BS, you know. I just, it's kind of weird. It really matters on your opinion, but I'm I'm a starting artist and I have no idea what to do after the cup. Like something for an idea to draw and study with. Yeah, it is kind of opinion, but it's more of like, what are you interested in? Like, like, uh, you see, I'm interested in landscapes and nature and trees and forests, and you know that's what I mostly paint. So, what are you interested in? Are you interested in people? Are you interested in you know, in general, like, what are you interested in? Are you interested in sports? Are you interested in animals? Um, are you interested in still life, you know, interesting objects, you know, old antiques, you know, are you interested in barns, you know, find what you're interested in, and then start drawing and painting that. Because if you try to draw or paint something you're not interested in, it's not going to be it's not going to be fun. So try to find, you know, really start asking yourself, like, you know, if you didn't have a job or you didn't have to go to school or you didn't have to do stuff for your parents or whatever the case may be, whatever your case is, you know, what would you do every day? Where would you go? What would you do? And why would you do it? And, you know, start figuring, you got to figure yourself out, you know, Figure yourself out and go from there. That's the best advice I can give because that's what I I have done. You're working in acrylics. Uh, will that work for this medium? With acrylics, you can use gesso. And that, that's really easy because that dries very quick. So yeah, do it with gesso. You can get a regular you know, the little cheap canvas panels that you buy from the store and you can put your own gesso on top and add different, all kinds of texture you want. Play around with it. I've done that as well. Um, I just personally don't like gesso. I like the oil prime because it's just better for oil painting, but um, you can't use an oil base for acrylics. So with acrylics, you want to use a gesso and just, um, yeah, get a get like a bristle brush, a one or two inch bristle brush, put some gesso on there and just move it around, you know, a very thin layer, not very thick, but you probably, with a gesso, you probably want to do like at least two layers. So one layer that's kind of thin, you could probably still see some of the canvas beneath it, let that dry for like half a day or something, and then slightly, very lightly sand it down a bit, and then go with another layer on top of that and you're good to go let it dry you know it'll dry really quickly especially if you leave it outside boom it'll dry super quick the truth is out there <laughs> yeah it probably is do you have any religious or spiritual beliefs um not really you just got out of the last jedi movie <sighs> that's cool that's my girlfriend stalking me, spying on me. <laughs> I'm almost done with this uh, live stream anyway. I'm out, almost out of breath. <sighs> Been talking for two hours now. Um, do you have any religious or spiritual beliefs? Not really. Um, probably about like 10 years ago, I started kind of questioning religion and stuff and I kind of fell off then. That was kind of the end of that. Um, but I try not to follow like any dogmas or anything kind of like, uh, I kind of just be as open as possible to anything. You know, I try to be respectful of other people's, you know, whatever they want to believe. But, uh, for me, I like to be open-minded about things and, um, question everything. I, I question everything and I, I see the both sides of everything. I try not to be on 
team red or team blue. You know, I'm not a blood or a crip. I'm not, you know, this or that. I just, like I said earlier, I try not to, even, I don't even believe my own beliefs. You know, I kind of just live my life and not worry about it. People to me are too difficult, but objects have. Um, I don't understand that comment. Are you ever going to go back to painting fantasy inspired things? Probably not. No. I like painting from uh, life mostly. You're a ninja. <laughs> you're not. You're a ninja, not a Jedi. Uh, are you on your phone or are you on the computer? Just curious. With objects, what do you suggest as I think you are a god? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not a god. I mean, it, what are you interested in? I mean, what do you, I mean, is objects, I mean, are you interested in like a glass jar? Are you interested in a vase? Are you interested in cameras? I mean, what? What do you find beautiful? What do you find inspiring? What motivates you? Maybe you should try maybe you should try landscapes, portraits and still lifes. Try everything and figure out, okay, I don't really like portraits. Uh, they're too hard, too difficult. Landscapes are cool. Okay, what kind of landscapes do you like? Do you like oh, the ocean? Do you like I mean, what's around you? Where do you live? What do you, you know, do you like going on nature walks? Like what, you know, you got to find out about yourself. Thanks for the tip in the gesso. I am enjoying this live stream, learn some new ideas, and I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, for sure. No problem, man. I know you've been following me for a few years now, I believe. So I definitely appreciate the support. Um, yeah, I mean, try try the gesso for, for, for sure. You know, you can get, gesso is cheap too. You know, acrylic stuff is so much cheaper compared to like oils. You know, I have a whole jug of like gesso. You get it for like 10 bucks or something and it'll last a long time. And, and you can just, um, you know, you can kind of control the quality of your paintings and like the quality of your ground, you know, that you're paint, painting on and get like, you know, different textures and, you know, just make your paintings more interesting instead of that generic kind of crappy little, texture that they sell you in the store you know i think it's worth it to uh try it a ninja jedi goddess <laughs> oh man that's my girlfriend everyone a ninja jedi goddess <laughs> I'm sure I'll probably see the new Star Wars eventually. I just, I really didn't feel like doing it, seeing it tonight. It was just, I was kind of tired. I just worked on this painting a bit and just kind of wanted to chill out. Anything that doesn't move, if it does, BS. <laughs> okay, then start painting anything that doesn't move. Nothing moves in photographs if you take photos of it. But I, I get what you're saying, like no waterfalls, no ocean waves, stuff like that. What made you want to switch to oils? Uh, it was kind of a personal choice for me. I mean, I, I looked up to a lot of like Sargent and Soroya and Andrew Zorn and just a lot of the great... Um, painters of the past and I just you know Monet all those painters and everybody I learned from used oils and uh, I kind of was being stubborn for like a few years and like I didn't want to do oils because like I thought they were complicated and I didn't like the extended drying time or you know I didn't like the prolonged drying time and uh, you know I felt like acrylics were just simple you can use water Oh, <laughs> okay, I got your. Um, 
I'm not a super duper Star Wars fan, but it's it's okay. I mean, it's it's not like it's not my favorite thing. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, like all the artists that I learned from are oil painters. So like, I just wanted to like with acrylics. Like I just felt I got as far as I could quality wise for me personally. And I, you know, just using oils, it's just. Um, I was able to slow down and just, I, I like painting wet into wet, you know, rather than lay many different, a lot of layers. Um, it's just a personal choice, you know. I, I, once I tried them out, I just, you know, they, they were super complicated to me at first too. Like I was really, it was all complicating, complicated. Um, but over the many months of reading stuff and learning everything, figuring out what kind of paint I like to use, figuring out the, that I don't like using any mediums. You don't have to use mediums. Figuring out what to paint on, figuring out the solvent. You know, I kind of figured out everything. So, yeah, you know, once you get everything figured out, it's a little more straightforward and you figure out a process. The theater broke out into applause several times. Oh, God. That's it. That just seems douche chilly to me, but that's, <laughs> that's funny. <clears throat> Would be awful to painting something you didn't like. It's a no brainer to me. Yeah, for sure. I just got comfortable with acrylics. I feel like oils are so complicated. Yeah, I mean, they can be, but it doesn't have to be. They don't have to be complicated. <clears throat> by not moving I mean complex shapes like humans, animals, waterfalls my mom's last name is Monet I think that is amazing <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah I know what you're saying you know simpler shapes and stuff then just you know get into simple shapes you know start figuring out what you like what you're good at and just you know really get into it I like acrylic because you can layer quickly. Yeah, I mean, that's, I used to love that too. I mean, that's the that's the thing I always used to like is like it dries so quickly. People used to always complain like, how do you paint with acrylics? They dry so quickly. And I used to flip it around and say, you know, I used to, I used to look at that as a positive. Like they dry so quickly, I'd use that to my advantage so I can p get done with paintings really quickly. I can layer quickly, stuff like that. Um, with this method, I don't really layer that much it's always like only like two layers most of the time. And um, maybe sometimes like a third layer if I like wait for it to dry fully and then go back into it later on. But I paint very directly now. Um, so. <sighs> okay. Getting out of breath here. What do oils have that acrylics don't? Um, longer drying time. Um, I feel they have a better texture to me. You know, they go on so much more smoothly and you get more coverage. Um, you know, the paint just goes longer. You can get one long, really nice stroke. With acrylics, it's kind of like sticky feeling. Um, oils... Um, more forgiving, you know, like, like all this is still wet. Um, you know, I'll demonstrate real quick. You know, if I wanted, you might not even be able to see this, but if I wanted, I can, I can scrape some of that off. See, like with a palette knife. So, um, and if I want it, I can, I can get a paper towel with some solvent and I can just scrub that down and it'll go back almost to the canvas, white of the canvas. It'll be a little t tinted. Um, so this thing will stay wet for like a day or two so I can just work into it. Um, you know, I can take a break. I can go eat dinner. Um, you know, I always like that, being able to go eat dinner or go to the store or do something else and then uh, come back and it's all still wet. All the, you know... I don't use as much paint anymore. I'm not wasting paint. 
So I can, I can spread out a lot of paint on the palette. I don't have to worry about it drying super quickly. Um, you know, tomorrow it might be a little bit stickier, you know, a little bit thicker, but it's still workable and usable. I mean, they are a little bit smellier, uh, especially, you know, with me using the lavender solvent, but uh, I kind of like the smell of the lavender now. But, um, you know. Regarding acrylics, they seem to darken a little after some time. You know, I think the same thing kind of happens with, uh, I don't know that they, it's not that they darken, it's that they go f they go flat um it's just when they dry you know it, people always say it dries like a shade darker it's because it like goes flat same thing happens with oils when this dries it'll go flat and then when you varnish it it'll kind of bring its brilliance back same thing with acrylics but uh you know Yeah, I mean, if if you if you're able to open up a window in your studio or in your room, it's not that big a deal to use oils. You know, they don't they're not that much. You know, I don't find the smell of them that bad. It's more of the solvent that you use um, that that smells, um, and that can be kind of detrimental to your health uh, more. But you know, you just have to be careful with it and and kind of limit it as much as you can. Um, you know, I've been looking into. Just the other day, I've been now that I'm using this lavender solvent, I'm, I'm much more cognizant of, of the solvent. And I was freaking out the other day because um, we were going on a drive and I had kind of my paint still out and I was afraid of like, I was reading up on like people's apartments and houses and studios catching on fire from uh, having a, a bunch of paper towels and a trash can with solvent and oil on them, you know, spontaneously combusting and stuff which uh, it's probably kind of rare, but it, it kind of isn't rare either. But so I've been looking into getting like a fire safe kind of trash can um, that's kind of a studio safe thing. So I'm kind of looking into that as well. So that's always good to have too. And that can also keep the smell of the solvents down. And then also I'm looking into uh, my landfill. Instead of throwing these paper towels in the trash like I've been doing, I want to bring them to the landfill so they can kind of deal with them in like a recycling type of manner, you know, however they're going to recycle them. Just be more naturally friendly about it. Um, most landfills probably have that, like a hazardous, you know, house waste recycling program or management. You know, every Friday or Saturday, I, you can go and drop it off between a certain time. You know, they accept solvents and uh, paint and stuff like that. So they'll probably take these rags and stuff, so. It's not empty, there's still water in it. Do you still do art critiques on your channel? Not really, I kinda had a lot. I still have like 10 or 20 critiques to do and I just haven't done them yet. But um, if you send me an e email, send me an email with some photos, I'll critique them personally. Um, I'm cool with that, but making a video, I'm kinda like, kind of over it right now but um if you want to send me an email I'll, I'll i'll reply for sure hey man since you're live just thought i'd say thanks i bookmarked your channel to improve some of my sketching skills a year back hope you're having a blast hey much appreciated greatly appreciate your comment and uh glad you found the my channel and videos helpful and uh yeah, I hope you're having a blast too, man. I hope you're enjoying the art and stuff and just enjoying life. Oil paintings can be very beautiful to me. They're more subtle, while acrylics can look more harsh. Yeah, it depends. Um, the reason I think the reason that is because of the edges. Um, you know, let me sh let me show you a painting I did uh, in acrylics. One second. So this is like one of my favorite paintings uh, in acrylics that I've done. It's just a still life of like couch pillow. But you can see I kind of 
it's really influenced by oil painting, like a la prima, doing it all in one go. And, uh, you know, having all this wet and wet blending here. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be harsh. It's just how you handle it. And it's, it's a lot tougher, I think, to get. It's mostly that harsh look I think you're thinking about is like, it's hard for people to blend like that, the wet and the wet. And it's also hard to get soft edges like, um, you know, just around these shadows and, um, you know, just all around soft edges. It's harder to get that effect with with acrylics, but this is definitely acrylic. Um, and it's still a painting I love. And I have a painting that's way up here. Uh, you can't see it, but it's, it's my cat. And I did that one um, from life. And that was acrylics as well. Um, so it is possible. It's just it's just tough. It's really tough. Fun artist shopping question. Got any brands of oil paint you're wanting to try? Nope. Nope. I found the brand that I really like, I really enjoy, and it's called Blue Ridge Oil Colors. It's handmade paint, as you can see here, tubed up um, by an artist in North Carolina. So check out his paint, Blue Ridge Oil Paint. I think his name is uh, Eric Eric Silver, I believe. He makes this paint, and he writes the name on the tube there. That's my favorite kind of paint to use. It's very brushable. Um, it's a higher quality than like gambling. I use gambling a lot and uh, this paint is way better, I think, far superior. Um, it's a mixture of linseed and walnut oil. So it just has a very smoother texture, smoother brushing, brushability to it, feel for me. And uh, I just really love it. So that's kind of what I use. You can also buy water-based oils. I tried a couple of tubes though, didn't like them, but some are swear by them. And then there are uh, Genesis oils made in Western Australia. Yeah, the water mixable oils, water-based oils, those are, that's probably a good, if you wanna try oils, definitely try those. I used those when I first started oil painting and I really enjoyed them. Um, it might seem a little weird when you first use them because you're so used to acrylics, but the only real difference is that they just take longer to dry. That's all you have to remember, is they just take longer to dry. So you can, you just use water, you can thin it down, use it just like acrylics, and or you can use the paint straight from the tube just like acrylics. They just take longer to dry. And you can clean the brush with water and everything. I mean. That's probably a really good way to go if you want to give oils a try and you want to avoid like the toxicity of them. That's a good way to go. Would it be cool if I worked up some drawings and emailed them to you and wait for some advice? Yeah, you can do that. Um, just go to my website. My email's on there. It's uh, schaferfineart.com. It's in the description in all my videos. Schaferfineart.com, and then just go to contacts, and my email will be on there. You can hit the little, um, there's a contact form, but you can't upload any photos, so just hit the little uh, envelope, and that's my email. It's info at schaferfineart.com. Did you watch The Last Jedi? No, I did not, but my girlfriend just went and saw it. Um, I'll probably eventually see it. I just wasn't feeling up to it tonight. I wanted to do some painting and just relax. And then I had some free time. So I was like, I'll just do a live stream. Um, Okay, um, they don't dry at all to use a heat dryer on them. That's weird, the water-based oils? I 
I think they I think they do dry. I mean, they just take you know. But I'm not sure what your. Uh, Mm, the harsh the harsh look has more to do with style and technique rather than being an intrinsic yeah good point it's not you know it, the acrylic paints don't have to have like a harsh look like i was saying you know it's just how you handle them and um you know and you can use you know a good medium to use i don't think i have it anymore but it's it's called the golden it's by golden acrylics and it's the open medium and i, I really recommend using that if you want to uh extend your acrylic blending time a bit you can use just a little dab of medium in a paint mixture and it'll it'll extend your uh blending time by up to like you know 12 to 24 hours and it'll be wet for that long and and you can just you know it's almost like oils you know and i was using those for like a year the golden open acrylics but it's a lot cheaper if you buy the open medium and then you can just use the medium whenever you want with whatever mixtures like so that's what really brings acrylics to the next level, I think, is like, so you can use, you can do like an underpainting or like a first layer really quickly, let it dry like normally. And then when you want to blend or do something on top of that and you need it to be really wet, you add medium to your mi paint mixtures and then you can use that on top of the dry uh, underpainting. So that's, that's, that can take it to the next level. <clears throat> Uh, okay, I'm trying to read through these. You should get some rest, young man. Sweet dreams. Okay, I will. I will eventually. Appreciate it. I'm probably going to wait till my girlfriend gets home, though. She's leaving soon. Uh, glad you're looking out for my health, though. I definitely need sleep. Yeah, I use my fingers sometimes when I paint. You know, it's not... Not the best thing to do, but uh, you know it happens. I get I get into it, you know. <laughs> I think I still have like some paint residue in my hands right now. I need to go. Wa I already washed my hands, but I was just demonstrating some stuff, so I got paint on me. Um, yeah, Rebecca, send me an email with your art for sure, and I will. Uh, I'll get back to you this weekend probably sometime or whenever, you know, probably this weekend. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if uh, your fingers ruins the archivalness of the paint. Like maybe, maybe it does. Maybe it can like damage it long term, but, uh, a lot of uh, professional artists do it from time to time, and uh, who knows? Who cares? We're not going to be around for it, you know what I mean? Let conservators deal with it, you know? Let, let's be real. Most of our paintings anyway, like probably all of my paintings won't be in a museum anyway, you know what I mean? There probably won't even be museums in 100 years, you know? We'll probably be, all be in some virtual reality and we can just visit museums while we're sitting on the couch with our little contact lenses in. Or uh, who knows, maybe by that time you won't even need contact lenses. It'll be like a little thing you you wear on your head and, and it'll immerse you into a virtual world, you know, or they'll like laser it in your eyes so then your brain can just switch between, you know, virtual reality, augmented reality and you know, who knows, man? That's the thing. We can't worry about what's going to happen a few hundred years from now. Do you believe in ghosts? No, I don't. I have never had an experience. And I've been watching the uh, one of my favorite shows. Actually, they probably just came out with a new episode tonight. Is uh, on BuzzFeed. They do... Uh, uh, two of the guys, Shane and Ryan, do a... Uh, what's the name of it? What do they call it? I can't think of the name, uh, but it's like some kind of ghost hunting show. They go to all these 
haunted places and they've never caught any evidence of ghosts and i just i don't believe it i, I just yeah I mean, it's, I think it's possible that there may be. I just never experienced it. I think it would be cool to experience, have a ghost experience. I'd be scared of crap if it really happened. But, uh, yeah, I, I think most of the time it's just, it's your fear, you know. People don't really see ghosts or have experiences during the day. They're all at night in the dark. You think if ghosts were real, they would only come out in the dark at night when people are afraid? I mean, it's stupid. It doesn't make sense. I think it's a... A primal fear from the past you know living out in the woods i mean if you go out in the woods at night and truly out in the wild i mean it's scary as hell dude you know especially thousands of years ago when you got like lions and cougars and giant bears and all kinds of crap everywhere in the dark you know i think that kind of fear and then the folklore mixed in you know passed down um you know, involving spirits and gods and all this stuff. I think, uh, I think a lot of it has just kind of been passed down through the generations and it's kind of just in our genetics some way, you know. It's kind of like humans, like when you're walking out in nature, we're able to, like, we're so evolved to see, spot snakes very quickly. Like if you see a snake on the ground, you'll catch it very quickly because we've adapted to be able you know, those are dangerous and we don't want to step on them. So we've adapted to see those very quickly. So I, th I think it's kind of the same thing, maybe like having that fear of something. Um, and then just being in the dark at night in a spooky place. And then you already have it in your head that ghosts may be real. And you know, all these scary movies nowadays, you know, I think it's just a mixture of all that stuff. Oh, the Genesis oil paints from Western Australia, they stay wet forever until you dry them with a heat gun. Their oil's not water-based. Wow, that's very strange. I've never heard of that. What are they made with, like, uh, some kind of kitchen oil, like olive oil-type paintings or something? Coconut oil-based? You know, you can only... Yeah, that's kind of... That's, that's really strange. I've never heard... I'm going to have to look that up. I've never heard of that. Do you believe we live in a hologram? <laughs> or a simulation, yeah. Um, oh, probably, you know, probably not, probably not. I've, it's definitely possible, um, especially with the way technology is gonna go. Um, it's possible that we could be already in a simulation and stuff, but at the end of the day, what are we going to do about it? And what, you know, does it really matter if, if we are, we're screwed. If we are, we're stuck in it. Um, I don't know. It, it, to me, like in reality, it doesn't seem like it, but that's the weird thing about reality is like, we could be, we really could be. Buzzfeed unsolved. Yes, that's it. Sim theory, very interesting. Yeah, simulation theory. I haven't really, you know, read about it a lot. Um, but yeah, I can definitely see it being possible. For sure, it could definitely be possible. And if we're not living in a simulation right now, maybe in a hundred years, we probably will be. We'll probably be living inside of robots. You know, we'll probably be partially robotic and they'll probably figure out some way to download consciousness or whatever it is that we call humanity you know whatever this life is and maybe they can duplicate it or reproduce you know it's going to be crazy man it's going to be crazy um if you, you guys are interested in that kind of stuff you should watch the movie ex machina that that movie is is crazy and i can see that's that's really one possibility of the way technology is going to go um you know creating some kind of like artificial brain that actually 
is fluid and changeable. You know, I was just listening to um, a recent Joe Rogan podcast, and they was talking about AI theories, and the guy was talking about Mick West. He was talking about how they're already doing, they're already running AI, AI programs are already running where there's two AI robots or programs. Um, one of them is a creator, and one of them is a judge that judges, and one of them creates. And they teach each other. The one that creates teach um, the one that creates teaches the judge how to create, and the one that judges teaches the creator how to judge. And um, so, and also the, when that thing creates something, the judge um, judges it, but then you know, it, they basically just keep learning from each other. They're teaching each other and they're, um, apparently they're putting out, it's all kind of weird number code. And the weird thing is the people running the program don't really understand the code that's being processed. They, they're not understanding how this AI, how the AI is actually doing this type of stuff. I mean, it's getting really bizarre and we're just at the we're at the very beginning of this stuff and it's it's getting very crazy uh very strange you have a picture of a ghost from gettysburg i would love to see it <laughs> what's the smallest brush you use uh, let's get back in art all right um Probably this one. Hold on. Probably this one. Doesn't look very small right there, huh? But it really is. It's a three slash zero. So it's very small. Um, I use this sometimes. Um, like if I'm plain air painting, I used it last week when I was plain air painting. I was doing something, you know, I was doing these smaller paintings and I had to do something very detailed and I was just painting really small lines, and uh, yeah, it worked. Um, but normally, no, I wouldn't use this. Like for this painting here, um, this was the smallest brush I used. This is a number six, and I very rarely even use this. I used, um, I mostly used a number eight on this painting here. It's a 12 by 24, and I used a number eight the whole time. It's about an inch wide almost. Um, just a flat bristle. I use that for most of the painting and larger brush, you know, a larger flat um, for the sky and stuff like that um, for blocking in really quickly. Uh, there's so many, uh, there's so many comments. I'm trying to catch up, go quick. Um, Development of a computer chip able to process inf information faster than the brain is possible and honestly could push an artificial intelligence error. Yeah, from what I've heard about that, they could push artificial intelligence error much further than we can believe. When, the, when they create AI that can teach itself or that can improve upon itself, what's going to happen is what they've theorized is when they have AI that can improve upon itself, you know, whether it's a group of AI or one AI, they said the amount of development um, that we can have, the impact in development that we could have in 10,000 years or the last 10,000 years, AI is going to be able to, the way that they can, that it's, that the computer can process, the AI can process it is so fast that they can do 10,000 years of development in two weeks. Now that is freaking crazy. That is scary. So the amount of development, you know, whatever it's developing, you know, processing and, um, you know, approving, improving upon itself, it's going to be able to jump a developmental 10,000 years compared to, you know, think of the last 10,000 years is basically the beginning of what we know as civilization. I think civilization was a little bit older than that, but really, you know, started documenting civilization 10,000 years ago. And AI is going to be able to, to do that 
within two weeks. It's crazy. I mean, they're going to be stronger than we are, faster than we are, and all physically faster. And, um, you know, Elon Musk just tweeted uh, the guy that owns Tesla and, and created PayPal or helped create PayPal. He just tweeted there was a robot that they just created that can do a backflip. And he, he replied to the uh, tweet saying, yeah, that's cool and everything, but wait till um, that thing is so moves so fast that you're going to need a strobe light to be able to see it um, because it's going to be able to move so fast we're not going to be able to see it. Um, and they're going to be infinitely stronger than humans. I mean, artificial intelligence is scary, dude. Basically, the robots are going to kill us all. That's what's going to happen. You know it's getting late when all the theories start coming out. Well, people are asking me about it. Everybody's talking about it. I didn't bring this stuff up. There are rattlesnakes and mountain lions where I live, foothills of the Sierras. We are very careful when out of the house. Oh, man, that's crazy. Where do you live in the Sierras? Where Do you live by Hope Valley, up up near Hope Valley? Like, what, what are you near? I'm just curious. Yeah, I was just hiking like a week or two ago somewhere, and right before I start hiking, it says uh, it says uh, there's a sign: "Beware of mountain lions. Don't hike alone, especially in dawn or dusk." Of course, I'm hiking alone. Luckily, it was the middle of the day, but I was really freaked out. Hike, like I, I kind of didn't hike as far as I wanted because I was like freaked out. I was like, I don't want to be wrestling. I don't want to be fighting a mountain lion because I'm gonna lose that battle. Oh man, God, there's so many. <sighs> I'll send you a ghost pic with my art. Okay, appreciate it. That would be cool. <laughs> I heard Alexa is very liberal. Is that true? Uh, I don't. She doesn't really know anything from what I. Um, I've seen she's kind of dumb she like she thinks she knows stuff and then she doesn't know anything she knows the weather and um we kind of just use her to play uh, rain sounds at night to go to sleep Physical, I thought we were talking about AI. Well, yeah, I mean, when you, uh, you know, when you start merging AI with, with, uh, in the physical realm, I mean, right? I mean, that's the whole point of like, of AI is, I mean, AI, obviously you can have computer processes and things like that, but when you put AI into a physical moving robot, um, I think things can become a little crazy. Uh, but that's obviously that's where it's headed. I mean, that's what that's that's exactly where it's headed. Yeah, having the uh, I don't want to say her name. Having the Allegra. Everybody knows what I'm talking about the Amazon, the Echo thing. I don't want to say her name because it activates her, but it's weird that she's always like listening. You know, it's kind of weird. Oh, okay, just outside of Placerville. Okay, so up up in the hills a little bit. That's cool. Um, this Sunday I'm doing plein air. We're gonna go to. Uh, we're planning on going to downtown uh, Auburn, I think. Auburn, or I think that's where he said. 
I'm not even sure. I'm gonna double check. We'll go, I think downtown Auburn we're gonna check out. Yeah, downtown Auburn, so should be interesting. No, I didn't hear about the first robot to become a citizen. When was that? Although I have heard uh, the theory that like by 2030, and this may be, it seems weird to think about it now, you know, 2030, it seems pretty far away or it seems kind of close, you know, like um, that by then there's going to be a robot rights movement that robots are going to, you know, we're going to, people are going to be fighting to have robots to have rights because eventually when you start, you know, there's a thing called transhumanism. And I, I read about this stuff back in like 2007, 2008, when I wasn't really into it. There's a movement called transhumanism that is geared towards blending humans with robotic technology and kind of prolonging human life. Eventually, they're trying to find a way to download consci consciousness onto some kind of memory card or a chip or doing something so that you can never die. You can always upload it back into a new body, a new robotic body or whatever, bionic body. And um, uh, so I think if, if robots and humans become indistinguishable, there may be a robot rights movement eventually. Um, it's just going to be crazy. You know, it, I don't know if we'll ever get to that point, but not that we won't ever get to that point. It's that what will rights be by the time we get to that? Maybe rights, we won't have to actually fight for rights anymore. Maybe it'll just, you know, the world will be in a better place. I mean, obviously we think nowadays like people are still fighting for certain rights to do things and people, it's always, you know, it's a political thing. It's, it's kind of dumb. But... If you think about it now, when you look statistically and, and just over the last hundred years, the world is in such a better place now than it was a hundred years ago with just in wars. There's so many, many, so many more less people dying in wars, dying in general. Um, you know, it, when you read the news every day, it doesn't seem like we're in a better place, but we actually are. Um, so who knows, maybe in the next you know, 20 years or 30 years with, with technology becoming global, the internet becoming worldwide, you know, Google and all these other companies are, f are finding out a way to, to put internet, wireless internet around the world with you know, balloons and all kinds of crazy things happening. Um, you know, the internet's a game changer and what's coming next eventually in the next 20 years is gonna be virtual reality. That's gonna be the new platform you know, the internet was the first kind of new platform that back in the day, everybody thought it was a fad and it turns out it's changed the world, you know. Um, apparently virtual reality is gonna be the next new type of platform from what people are predicting. Um, can you send me techniques for improving and enhancing my drawing? Just go on Google or go on YouTube and type in how to draw, learn how to draw, how to get better at drawing. Boom, there's a ton of videos. Check out Stan Proko. Type in Proko on YouTube, P-R-O-K-O. He has tons of videos about drawing, great artist. Check out his stuff. Uh, Auburn, you live in Alabama? No, I live in California. There's an Auburn, California. <laughs> Do you believe in spirit entity? I'm not really sure what that means or what that is. Um, so prob maybe possibility of it. <laughs> I'm kind of getting tired. She became a citizen of Saudi Arabia recently. And one of the first things she said was that she thinks the human race is useless and should ex not exist. Yada, yada. It's creepy. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I feel like I heard about that now. Now that you mentioned Saudi Arabia, I feel like I did hear about that. 
transhumanism. That's the eugenic one, right? No, I'm not. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's kind of merging, you know, humans with with technology. <laughs> I don't understand. If you're worried about Allegra would, or Echo, why have it on so she's listening? Well, when you have her plugged in, she's always listening. So I can say, Allegra, what's the weather? You know, I could say it right now and she'll tell me the weather. Um, so she's always constantly listening. You know, it's a pain to have to go turn her on just to use her. So the point is, like, you always have it there. Um, you know, it, it's kind of weird, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm calling it Allegra because I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to... I don't even know if you guys would be able to hear her if I, if I triggered her, but... uh. Oh man. All right, guys. Any uh we kind of got off on the crazy path here. I hope everybody enjoyed this wow, 3-hour live stream almost. 5 more minutes, it'll be 3 hours, so I'm just going to keep it rolling for 5 more minutes because why not? We kind of got off the beaten path of art, but, uh, you know, I've talked about art so much, man. You know, it's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know what else to really, um, um, uh, talk about. Well, apparently the interesting thing about Allegra is that, um, Uh, the next big thing that, from what I've heard, the next big thing are going to be Allegra um, skills. You know, there's a thing called a skill, I think, that you can create. You can go to Amazon and you can buy these different skills that people make. And those are apparently in the next probably two to three years are going to get really popular, especially with the Apple Home or Google Home or whatever the hell is going on now. You know, you can control all your lights and all your you know, the thermostat, all the stuff from your phone now. And you can even control Allegra with your phone. Um, that's kind of one thing I like about her. You can control it with the phone. You know, I, I don't really like using voice, but voice is one going to be one of the next big things. Um, you know, with the Echo or Allegra, you can order stuff straight from your Amazon account. You can say, hey, Allegra, order me toothpaste. And boom, she'll order you, you know, or what kind of toothpaste do you want? What, you know... Colgate, I want Colgate toothpaste. Boom, ordered, done. You know, it, it's speed. That's the thing. People are going to have less and less time. and People already have less and less time. If you think about it now, everybody, not many people watch TV anymore. People watch TV on their own time. They watch Netflix when they have time to do it. They watch, uh, you know, DVR or TiVo or whatever it is nowadays on their own time. They watch YouTube on their own time. They don't tune into a show when it comes out they wait for it when they're on their own time and go watch it so you know speed is a very important thing uh, can we get a close-up of your painting back there this painting i kind of did a close-up of it earlier um it's, it's kind of hard. You're not really going to see much of it. Um, if that's the one you want to see, I'll show you real quick. But uh, what is that hat? What is that hat hanging on the wall right there? That's my uh, girlfriend's hat. I don't know. I don't really wear hats. Great live stream. Hope to catch your next one. Have you tried or do enjoy? Do you enjoy watercolors? Um. Watercolors are hard. I started out using watercolor year, years ago, but um, yeah, I might try them. I might try them real soon here. Here's a close-up of this painting. Sorry, my cords are getting tangled up here. Here we go. So 
So one last close up there, guys. I just did that one tonight. I'm not sure that I'm finished with it. I'm kind of just letting it marinate in my brain for a while. See what I'm going to do with it. Um, it was interesting hearing your opinions. Yay, thanks for the uh, thanks for the questions and stuff. It's always fun talking about other stuff rather than art, you know. Um, you know, I try not to talk a lot about politics and, you know, I'm not really into politics like that, but I'm into like interesting other things and I like hearing other people, you know, I'm not trying to like offend anyone on, you know, my channel and stuff or like offend religious people or offend, you know, political people, you know, I don't care what anybody believes, you know, if you want to eat meat, go eat, if you eat meat every day, every day for breakfast, lunch, dinner, go ahead, that's your choice, I choose not to, you know, that's me, you don't have to do that, you know, you shouldn't be offended by that. You know, I'm offended by almost nothing. You know, I, there's, I can't think of one thing that offends me. I was saying that earlier. Like, I'm just, I'm so chilled out. You know, I hardly ever get angry. You know, I'm not, it's not that I'm not passionate about anything. It's like, people have their own beliefs. People are going to believe what they want. And like, you know, you just got to focus on yourself and, and the people around you and, uh, you know, hang around a good crowd and just be open-minded to everybody. You know, we got to learn from each other and just grow. It seems Jeff Bezos has passed over from being a visionary to being a Sith Lord at this point. Yeah, I think he's, I mean, he's one of the top, what, like top 10 or 15 most rich people in, in the world. So, yeah, it's kind of a shame, but, you know, it is what it is, you know, whatever. I heard of a story of someone's parrot ordering a bunch of stuff from the family's Allegra. That's hilarious. I've never heard that. Uh, yeah, I like Elon Musk. He's a cool dude. I like what he's doing with Tesla and all that stuff. It's really cool. What's going on? If you just tuned in, tuned in, I'm about to jump off this thing soon here, but uh, you can catch the replay. Um, it'll be uploaded by tomorrow, probably. It'll be it'll be up live tomorrow. It takes a while to process, especially if it's a three-hour video. I know people get pissed because it's a long three-hour video, and people don't like to watch it, but uh, I don't care. I like doing it, and I like connecting with you guys. If other people don't want to watch it, they don't have to watch it. Could you please repeat the name of the guy you, um, I'm gonna type it in the chat. I think this is his name. Proko on YouTube, Stan Prokopenko. I think that's how you spell it. Um, yeah, he's a really great artist. He went to uh, Jeff Watts's atelier down in Southern California. And now he kind of teaches and, and does his own thing. Um, now, I don't have a schedule for my live stream. It's kind of just random. Uh, in the future, maybe like, uh, it's, I know it's like weird to say this, but, but maybe, uh, maybe uh, when I get, um, I'm going to upgrade my apartment next year. It'll be next August then I may be able to schedule live streams and do things a little more uh, on a schedule because I'll have my own. Right now I'm in a, a studio loft apartment, so it's one big open room. So when my girlfriend's home, you know, there's always a lot of noise, things going on. You know, it's hard to do a live stream and be focused and stuff like that and make videos. Um, so when I upgrade my apartment, I'll have like a separate room you know, with a door that can close and stuff. So I'll be able to do a little bit more stuff uh, from time to time and maybe on a schedule or um, stuff like that. But, you know, for now, it's kind of just do it when I have the time, when I feel like it. And uh, one day, if I ever start making just a living from my art and from my painting, then I can really just, boom, I'll create a schedule and just do it, you know. But uh, until then, 
um, you know. It was a great live stream, fun and interesting. Hey, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. That's what I try to make it, you know. I try to make it fun and interesting. Just talk about talk about things, you know. Try to educate about, you know, the materials I'm using, stuff I'm doing now, you know, what am I doing with my process, you know, how am I thinking about my art, what do I plan on doing, and uh, what have I done in the past, you know, how to get good at stuff, you know. I try to just cover everything. Eventually, I want to, like, interview some different artists and stuff. I think it would be cool. Um just to get other artists' opinions on stuff and um, just start exposing different artists to my viewership, my 200,000 subscribers, you know, just start sharing the wealth and uh, just creating more interesting content. You know, that was one thing I wanted to do with my Patreon and um, I just, I'm not able, I just wasn't able to put a lot of work into my Patreon, unfortunately. But I wanted to kind of raise enough money to where I could like, you know, travel the U.S. and just create a ton of different content, you know. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, do a road trip around the U.S. And I would be creating so much different content, you know, maybe bring a, a videographer with me um, to really just document everything, capture everything, do some plain air painting meet up with artists around the country and interview them and not just interview them, but have, you know, have a video conversation, go out playing air painting with them, you know, just get to know, and, and they don't have to be famous artists. I'm not looking to, you know, be the elitist, you know, look at the elitist artist. You know, a lot of those artists probably wouldn't even, you can't, that's the problem with a lot of those, the famous artists nowadays, the elitist type of artist. You can't even contact them. You know, I send an email to one of them or a few of them and they don't even respond back. You know, it's like you don't even respond back to your fans. You know what I mean? Like what, what, uh, how do you create a fan base if you're not even going to communicate with your fan base? You know, they never respond to comments on Instagram, never respond to comments on YouTube or Facebook or do live streams. They're, you know, are they that busy? Is having a full-time art thing that busy? You know, what do you, you know, I don't know. I think a lot of artists, um, um, no, I'm not full-time currently. I'm, I'm a graphic designer, but I'm, I'm, my focus is next year. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really building a plan. This is the first time I've really fleshed out a, a full plan of creating uh, a plan over the next few years to start selling my art and making a living from my art and there's just so many things to do and it's it's hard to be a one man one man show and do everything but um sorry i'm just reading some of the comments here guys i appreciate all the love man i appreciate it um but yeah you know go around the country and just create you know create so much and i wanted to make all these videos free for everybody to watch on youtube you know i because everybody on youtube's doing all the artists they're doing the same stuff they're putting out plain air videos tutorial videos how to do this how to do that blah 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 here's how to paint a mountain here's how to paint this nothing wrong with that but it's saturated there's enough of that we i want to make i want to create some inner entertaining interesting videos you know i wanted to do some plein air stuff with different artists and have a videographer capture it and be artistic and i wanted to edit the videos myself put it together put them out you know sit down with artists have a conversation film that you know start you know creating because i just have passion for the stuff you know it's not just art it's about creating the content that you know some interesting stuff behind all this art and what i was saying is like those elitist artists don't even you know they don't even contact you back they don't even communicate so like i want to shed light for artists like guys that you know you guys you know the great artists out there that nobody's heard of you know like rebecca she probably has some great art good youtube channel and it's super tiny nobody's heard of her you know what i mean so like go to her house go to you know visit people you know see where they live go to 
go to museums, you know, bring artists with me to museums and um, check out, uh, you know, I, I had an idea for, um, I had an idea for bringing one of you guys out, a subscriber out, you know, like doing a Kickstarter, like you just said in the, in the comments, bringing someone out from wherever they are in the world, using the money, fly them out here and film the whole thing for like a week or however many days I can afford to do it, five days, whatever. And then go to a few different art museums um, or maybe, fly, you know, visit a place that's real art centric. Go to different art museums, uh, go plein air painting, capture the culture, um, just the whole artistic culture and just learn stuff and film it and document it for people that, that aren't able to travel, that can't afford to see these museums or uh, see these different beautiful, amazing places. Just capture that and put it out there. You know, I... It, there's a lot of, I have a lot of interesting ideas. It's just one day I'm going to do them. It just takes a lot of time and it's hard being a one man show to do this stuff. You know, I'm going to need to hire a videographer. I'm going to need to have like, you know, an assistant or something. I don't know, but, uh, that's just me talking, you know, just a lot of, uh, just a lot of interesting ideas I had, you know, Great stream, Brandon. Really enjoyed it. Looking forward to the next one. I was going to say that about your co podcast, my son interviewed a radio guy the other day on his, and it was really cool. So that's a good idea for you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I just started hanging out with artists this last Sunday um, that are actually around my age, which isn't a big deal. I mean, I'll interview any artist or hang out with any artist. Um, but it's cool actually finding artists that are my age that have been freelancing and that have been doing things. And, you know, it'd be cool to sit down and video them and, and have a conversation say like, yo, how was the freelancing? How did you like it? You know, cause they're, they're into more like illustration and fantasy stuff, fantasy art, but they like doing plain air as well. So, um, you know, it'd be just a different unique take on art and they have a different perspective on everything. Um, so yeah, I think it'd be cool to just sit down and have a conversation and just say, you know, find out about them, you know, what, what makes them tick? What is it about that they, you know, how did they get into art? What is their life like? How did they, um, you know, did they always grow up in California? You know, just get into it. Just have a conversation. Make it interesting. Do you have the ability to draw, paint a person's spirit visions? Would you even be interested? Wow, that's it. That's, I've never heard that question. That's very interesting. Um, what do you mean by that? Elaborate a little bit more because maybe I, I could do that. But uh, that would be uh, pretty tough. Ooh, I like the way you're thinking about videos. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you know, right now I'm not going to come up with anything. You know, I have these ideas. It's stupid for me to even put these ideas out because somebody could just steal them, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I've i had these ideas for like a year and a half now. And I have I kind of just see what other people have done in different genres, like not even art, just, you know, flying somebody out and having an experience and filming it. And, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting idea. And I was like, man, why has nobody done this with art in plain air? Um you know, I think it would just be so cool. You know, I would love to just do some kind of Kickstarter or something like that. Um, have the time to do it, have the funds to do it, the time to do it, have it planned out, film it all, and then use that and then just do another one down the line. A few months later, fly another person out. You know, just do a lottery. You know, for anybody that contributes to the Kickstarter, they get put into a bucket and then I pick one person, boom, it's like a lottery, you know what I mean? And uh, just do that, you know, two a year, have two people fly out, boom, three a year, you know, however many, if I was doing this full time, like painting full time, and I could afford to have time to do that, it would be awesome. It would be really super cool, and it'd be interesting content, you know? So that's, that's something I'm thinking about, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend's on the driving home, so uh
Sorry, I'm just texting my girlfriend. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to leave because she's watching the stream and she's enjoying it. Um, uh, I started a YouTube. I started on YouTube ten years ago and it was different then. Now every everyone does the same thing and it's getting boring and mediocrity is rife. Yeah, I mean it's. Yeah. It's a shame, you know. That's the thing. Uh, you know, I got into the YouTube before, right? You know, it was almost right when people they started monetizing it, and I was—I think I was one of the first artists to start monetizing videos because, at least, acrylic artists. Because back then there was only there was like nobody doing acrylic art, and because uh, I kept looking up ac acrylic videos, and there wasn't anything back then that much, at all. So I started making some, and I, I think I was the first person to kind of monetize videos. And then when monetization, and I would tell people, man, I just made a nickel uh, yesterday from my videos. You know, I was getting so stoked working at PetSmart. I was like, I just made a nickel from my videos. And they were like, wow, you made a nickel. And I was like super stoked. And then, you know, now I'm making like 300 a month or something, which is it's pretty cool. But um but I was stoked I'm making two cents and then it was a nickel and then it was 10 cents, a, you know, a day. Now it's like $10 a day, something, you know, something small, but uh, it helps. But once that monetization became mainstream, now everybody just does it for money. You know, it's all clickbait. It's just put out, let, let's just put out as many tutorials as we can. It doesn't matter if the quality is good or not. Let's just put out tutorials and just try to make money. And it's like, I'm not into that, man. I'm not, I'm done with that, you know. It's late, please do go to bed. I'm worried. And if you don't go to bed, I won't. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are funny. I'm going to get off here shortly, guys. Um, I can ju I'll just ramble on for days, man. I'll just go on for days and days and days. But I am getting dehydrated. I need to get some water, and I got to get off here. Um... Sleeplessly, sleepless elite. I hope he's one. Nah, I usually, you know, I'm usually, uh, it's Friday night, so I'm up a little later, but I'm usually in bed by like 10, 10 30, 11. And I, I sleep till like 7 38 in the morning. Um, so I get a good amount of sleep, but you know, the important thing is like people think like you shouldn't sleep and you need to work hard and like not sleep as much, but the important thing is what are you doing? during the hours you're awake, like if, if you're only up for 12 hours, you need to really be productive in those 12 hours. You know, if you're up for 16 hours, 17 hours, you know, that's that's the thing about it. You know, people are always worried about, you know, you, you should stay up and, and work, but it's like you need to work the hours you're awake, you know, when you're trying to build a business and stuff. So that's kind of what I try to focus on. You know, I could have done another painting tonight, you know, after this one started another one instead of doing this live stream. But, um, you know, I figured let's just do the live stream because I'm going to be painting this weekend anyway. So let's do a live stream. Rebecca, where are you at again? Are you on the East Coast or Midwest? Where are you at? It's probably like two or three in the morning there, huh? Yeah, I, I normally don't do uh, live streams this late. I, I normally do them like during the day uh, in California. So then most of the U.S., it's during the day, not late at night, right? Like right now. But usually when I do <clears throat> late at night here, I get people from like Australia, people in, in Europe tuning in. So I try to like, and go worldwide with it for the most part. But yeah, my, my viewers are kind of dipping off now. I only got 18. How does YouTube work for money ads? Um, <clears throat> you know, you monetize the video and if people watch the video, watch the ads before your videos, you get like 10 cents or a small amount, sometimes up to a dollar if it's a... The more, the more time the ad has been watched, the more money you make. And I think if they click the ad, you make even more money. So, um, <clears throat> you know, that's a way to support my channel. Like if, you know, I, I hate ads too. I, 
personally, I use an ad blocker, so I don't blame anyone for if they use an ad blocker and, and they watch my channel. I'm just glad you're watching it, you know what I mean? And I, I'm, I'm thankful for the support, but um, if you really wanna support me and you can't monetarily give to me or you can't buy a piece of art, the best way to do it is to watch one or two ads before the videos and click on them um, and just let it take you, just let a new tab open up in the website, just let that load and just let keep it there for uh, a while, um, open in the browser for a while. I, I think that would help me. Um, you know, it's a free way to help me if you really want to help me, just watch the ads. If it's a five minute one or something, just, you know, click through it. I, I don't, don't, waste your time but if it's like a 15 30 second one just give me 30 seconds of your time and uh, it may help me a little bit um so that's one way to to do it but that's kind of how it works but it, it's kind of up and down every every month is different on youtube you know this is the best month for youtube december because people are really putting out the companies are really advertising and um i make a lot more money in december usually like a hundred bucks more depending in the past I made a lot more money and now YouTube has kind of gone downhill my views have doubled no okay so check this out so January 2017 compared to January 2015 my views have doubled and my money has stayed exactly the same if not I got less now so explain that so YouTube is kind of you know you can't put all your eggs in one basket you have to really diversify your streams of income to be, you know, to make a living from art. Hello from Turkey. Thanks for joining in. I'm about to get off here soon. <clears throat> Rebecca, you're in the Midwest, so it's two, yeah. Rebecca, you can definitely draw, draw me on your channel, absolutely. I'm flattered that you would do that. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> YouTube be taking like 20% and Google be taking 80% of revenue though. No, actually YouTube takes, here's the breakdown. Here's the breakdown. So what happens is YouTube, which is owned by Google. So you could say YouTube and Google are one and the same. They take, I think 45% of the revenue. So, and they take that out before I even see it in my account. So right now I'm making like, I just got an I just got a check today or yesterday. Let me show you tell you guys what I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell you guys, but I'll give you a roundabout. So I'll go to my PayPal here. <clears throat> it says money in. I just got December fifteenth, which is yesterday, three hundred and thirty six dollars. Okay. They already took 45% out. Before. I don't even know what the other 40, you know, 45%, boom. They YouTube takes that out. And then since I'm on a YouTube network, I make 70% of from my money. So so my YouTube account says I make like 500 a month, but I only make 70% of that, so I end up getting like $336. They keep 30%. And the reason to be on a YouTube network is because they put, they're able to get more premium ads on my channel. So I make more money per ad. So if I was just using like Google AdSense, I'd be making less money. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how it works. It's, it's very complicated. It's weird. And you get certain, if you join a YouTube network, they have like free music you can use. You know, there's different advantages to being on a YouTube network. But uh, anyway, yeah, guys, that's I hate talking about the business stuff. I, I, I really can't stand it, you know. Um. Really, really the YouTube, it just helps me, you know, the little bit of money I get, I'm super grateful, man. It's, it's unreal, you know, being able to get like two to 300 bucks a month from the YouTube thing. But uh, I feel that I've, I've given enough value out there, you know, six or 700 videos. You know, I think uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm super grateful for the little bit of money I get from that. And it just allows me to keep kind of investing, like I was saying earlier, in, you know, doing more stuff for this channel, you know, buying materials for my art and being able to give back, you know, this great microphone that I bought, you know, I'm, I'm able to give back to you guys, you know, and give you value. And that's, that's really what it's all about. And like I'm saying, you know, I want to do those cool videos and stuff. Maybe one day I'll do a Kickstarter or something if, if people really want to, you know, give 10 bucks to me and, and really contribute to, uh, you know, creating some kind of interesting art content. But uh, until that day comes, you know, I'm just going to be chilling here and, uh, you know, maybe starting a podcast and um, just doing talks like this on my podcast and interviewing other artists. And I think with my podcast, I want to film them as well. So I'll put the video on YouTube and I'll have a podcast in the podcast app so you can listen to it on the go. So uh, we'll see how that comes in the in the coming months, but it's something I want to do. So uh Rebecca, you gotta go to bed. Nice live stream. Hope to catch you on the next one. It's very interesting, insightful. Had fun chatting with everyone. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you for uh supporting me. Have a good night. I'm about to get off here as well, guys. It's midnight here, it's 12.05. My girlfriend's gonna be home soon. So I'm gonna jump off here. Um art is really just math, width, and height. Okay. Um Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep on painting and drawing. Don't get discouraged. Really appreciate you guys tuning in, chatting up. It was really fun. This is probably one of the funnest ones in the chat. Really enjoyed all the, the comments and stuff. And I uh, love you guys. Hope you guys do well. Stay well or be well. And uh, take care of yourself, everybody. Take care of yourself. It's important. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace, peace. Peace and love. Until next time, folks. Later.